Aren't you happy and now started burping at other people too instead of just you? I... <laughs> <laughs> Preemptive, yeah. Um, I do not know. I, I guess the question is how did the other people feel about that? I don't know. No one said anything, fortunately. Congrats on being second, Psycho. Welcome in. Happy Wednesday, everybody. How are you all doing? It um, is so warm. Tifa has what I imagine to be... Um, Stage fright? I guess, yeah. I was gonna say something fancy like irritable stomach syndrome. But I, I don't think it's actually a medical thing and it's just stage fright. So why did you yeah. burp at people today? At, we already mentioned a while ago how much we hate presentations. And I had to give two presentations today for some pretty... for a big round. For really pretty people. Pretty people, that as well. Big round, lots of higher ups. And I was starting to get so nervous. Like the first bit of my presentation I actually managed to get through quite well if I say so myself and then I saw some people in the meeting like looking at the slides with this disapproving face and I started to get nervous so I'm like in between I get like a sip of water and I'm like what? and then my stomach <laughs> yeah, exactly. you can see the water oh, I actually kind of hurt my teeth <laughs> Ah, they can't be that pretty if I wasn't invited. Mm, good one. That's a very good one. Fair, fair point. So I start to get like nervous and then I start stumbling and I can't get out of my words. Stuttering or st because stumbling? Because if, if you started stumbling, that means you fell. Yeah, in the That's gonna make the it's whole presentation way more awkward. It's a metaphor. Then my stomach started getting upset halfway through the second bit. And I go like, bleh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm burping at everyone through my presentation. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Oh, it was so embarrassing. And what did you learn from all of them? Don't give presentations. I have a question for you, Tifa. What is the difference in your own words between you giving a presentation to a bunch of people in potentially expensive suits? versus you playing a video game and streaming that and recording that for the rest of eternity and uploading that on YouTube? Well, one, it's not work. That already helps. My salary doesn't depend on it. Mm -hmm. And this is more like the fun stuff, isn't it? Okay, I was hoping more you would come with answers that I can refute and tell you it's basically the same, but you're bringing up really valid points. <laughs> I don't know how to make you feel better about. So, do you have something else we could be talking about? I feel like these things are very different, especially since I'm still like coming into my new position, still learning things about how to do my job, and then you're mm. then I have to do like these things, and it's like, oh, if I fail now, it's gonna like completely suck, you know? I'll never be taken seriously again. I probably won't be after this anymore. Do you do you really think after all this time working in the same place, that's still gonna be an issue? Because it's different I positions. I would imagine after all these people have seen from you, we are past the point where you can disappoint them. <laughs> the majority of these people are all yeah. new to me. Okay. So it's like... Also a little bit more of like a formal atmosphere that I'm not used to, which mm -hmm. makes it slightly more awkward too. I, I keep repeating myself potentially for the rest of the stream, but I was really hoping you would be saying something where I can spin this into a positive message and you are not helping me achieve that right now. I do better in like the informal settings. I could probably have my poop presentation and do that without any issue. But then you go to the like informal part, you know? Like I have no problem with that sort of thing. Okay, and what keeps you from treating your regular work presentation from doing your 
I lost my sentence. What keeps you from just doing it the same way as the poop presentation? I don't know. It's the whole work setting. I want to say you could I print really out the slides and hold them up to the side of you to give the same impression. Well, we'll no. <laughs> Jack, the world isn't ready for Tifa. Sometimes I feel like I'm not ready for myself. I was gonna say, I think the issue that needs to be worked on isn't whether the world is ready for Tifa, because fuck the world, right? The question is, is Tifa ready for the world? <laughs> because that's something I think we can work on. Sometimes yeah. I can't unleash my full potential. You have a potential? <laughs> oh! Oh, straight in the heart. Sorry, uh, I, I had to be mean to you. Oh. I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't find a way into that that was positive, so I had to go for the ripping out your jugular. Fair um, no, but if you think yeah. about it, there's like eight billion people in the world, not counting yourself, and people are gonna have an opinion on you no matter what. Like, you're not gonna change individually 8 billion people's minds to think about you the way you want them to think about you. But you can change how you feel about her and that you just do the thing you want to do or have to do. I feel there is a power in that. Yeah, I feel happiness that this is in this group and round is like a once a month thing and not a every week kind of thing. Do you want to do like a like a mock version, like a trial every week to get used to it? Because I really think after a while you just have gotten so used to it that it's normal and mm. a regular thing to you. Maybe after a while, we'll see. But yeah, I'm not ready for work, but I'm also not ready for a vacation. Because Monday I was like, oh, this is like a super chill week, you know. It's all gonna be good, so much time, and now I'm like drowning, it feels like. And it's like, I can't go on a vacation. If it's starting Saturday, it's not your problem because you'll be on a vacation. Yeah, but then starting Monday, it's gonna be even more of my problem. No, Monday you'll be on a vacation. Yeah, the Monday after that then, when I'm back. Yeah, that's a problem for future, Tifa. Fuck her. Anyway. She's kind of a bitch. Work stress. How is everyone's Wednesday coming along? I mean, you can also bunker up and never go out. That's the preferred method, but at some point someone will come here and get me out of the bunker because there was yeah. no more money to pay the rent. I mean, fair is fair, the rent money goes off of my account and you just send me your half every month. That is actually true. All I have but to do it, is cancel... It will be me that will evict you. <laughs> <laughs> like, start pulling your own weight, you know? Not working. Pay me. In money. <laughs> not in the, the dough either. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not working. I'm immune to it. <laughs> I have to tear oh. gas me out of here. Uh, don't say that too loud. Somebody might take that as a challenge. That's I hope not though. not a great way to leave an apartment. It's just like while I'm in complaining mode, it is so warm. Summer has arrived and it came like, bam! When I came home, I think if you cracked an egg on my arm, it would have fried in a few seconds. Why that would, would have you crack hard. an egg on your arm? I did. Before it could even drip down, it would already be cooked. Why would you crack an egg on your arm? That's how warm it was. I, I never got that the thing that fire. people use eggs to show you that something is hot and can be used as a cooking plate. Like, oh. there are so many things you can do with a cooking plate. Why does it have to be eggs? Well, names. Because with eggs, you can see the difference easiest. It's not okay, like it gets color. I can put... Yeah, I guess. <sighs> I can put a burger on it, but it's going to be a bit harder to see how done it gets. Just flip it, like, once or twice. Get a little, get some char. Yeah, but it won't get char. That's the whole thing. Then you're not really hot, are you? Well, your egg doesn't get char either. <laughs> well, hopefully. But yeah, that's why I can't speak that. anymore. It's too warm, is what she's trying to say. <laughs> if my SO tried to evict me, I'd be out of that. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the point? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. 
I, I get it, don't worry. Hello Evie, happy Wednesday. How are you? How are you doing? Oh. Uh, I have no clue what the temperature in the Netherlands is going to be like next week though. I Apparently, hope not as bad. Congrats on being first. Nice. Congratulations. Impressive. Apparently, when we're leaving for the Netherlands, there's going to be a thunderstorm rolling over Central Europe again and then okay. the temperatures drop to like 20 something degrees Celsius again. Just in time I, for our vacation. I can absolutely live with that. To the point where the mornings might be so cold you need a jacket. Oh. Well, we'll see. Wonderful weather. <laughs> might kick you out, but we can still be friends. No, we can't still be friends. <laughs> Honestly, it depends. I, I feel like right now you're thinking entirely too much about that question. No, not really. Your face made me not feel good though. <laughs> and not, not, not your I'm face, not like physically, but the, the expression you were wearing. Well, I can't help my eyebrows today. I can help your eyebrows today. Better? Yeah, I think this looks like what a smart person would look like. Absolutely. Also, look at yeah. How do you get things on your face? What is this? What is it? I don't know. It's a small little Outside black tree. spot. Outside tree. Meh. Anyone who tries to prevent me from being my neat princess true self does not love me. I mean, yeah, landlords generally don't love her. What are you to a landlord? A subject? I think no. the technical term is renter, but subject feels like it should be the word to use because it's also a landlord or a landlady, you know? Yeah, but the land... oh, like that. Yeah. Now, now I see... If it's a rental it company, then using the word renter just makes sense to me. But if somebody is renting a place from a landlord, I feel like applying the term subject to yourself. Hmm. I know, maybe we should address our land lady like, yes, my liege, here's your money, please use it wisely. Something like that. I, I don't know if she'd be into that. I don't think so, Sandra. I don't think so either. Landlord might have. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely the time. I made some uh, cold coffee again before the stream, and we've gotten to a point where it is now lukewarm. You know, the, the kind of temperature where if you. If you want to drink it, it's like, it, it shouldn't be this warm. It's not warm warm, it's just warm enough to not feel refreshing. But it's also too cold to be considered warm. It's exactly the worst of both worlds. And I will drink it anyway because I made it. When you go outside with a bottle of water and you put it in your pocket, yeah, and then uh, you drink mm -hmm. it and it's like this body temperature warm. Yeah, because th that's a true thing about me. Um, usually when we go outside and I take water along, because I need to put it somewhere, I'm too lazy to take a backpack or something for just a small bottle of water. So I put it into my back pocket. Which means that after a while, because of my body temperature, the water will warm up. And I mean, because of the location where I put the water, it's gonna be exactly as warm as my ass. <laughs> ass warm. I don't know how to feel about that, but at the same time, I keep doing it, so it's not that bad, I wanna say. It's, I guess, part laziness. Yeah, something like that. Convenience. Talking about um, laziness and convenience. T5, I have a question for you. Go for it. Why do you not believe that chapter one and chapter two of Higurashi are a time loop? <laughs> I was still like mentally preparing, but excuse me. I was can hoping you, I could get another. That? I was hoping I could get another line in there, but the head turn just did me in. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> uh, are we already starting? <laughs> the thing is, I'm never starting shit because I never. Like, stop shit. It's just constant with me. Like, it, it might not always feel like it, but trust me, like, in the back of my head, it's always there. I have actually spent the rest of yesterday evening 
And most of my work day today, when I didn't need my full brain capacity to work, to think about possible scenarios why the story is like this and how a time loop would make sense. Because still, I don't think they're gonna go with mythical reason. Jack is continually shitting confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty sure there's a medical term for it, but I'm there's a one. hole in this chair. Multiple. Um, <laughs> Tifa takes drugs so that she can't smell. Um, yeah, when I yawn, it's not because I'm tired, it's because my eyes and everything are burning. <laughs> You're gasping for air. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we going into that part of a conversation? Yeah, no, but but I don't want to believe that it's just a magical reason why we're experiencing a time loop. And as I was getting ready to go... Uh, see, I can't speak anymore, it's too warm. While I was getting ready to go to bed yesterday after stream, I was sending... I was standing. <laughs> it's warm, guys. One sec. Blah, blah, blah. So I was getting ready for bed. And then you were standing there. And, but, <laughs> but I was thinking the time loop from the way the story is told cannot be Keiichi my borrows. As in? It cannot be tied to Keiichi. Why? Because then the narrative of chapter one doesn't make sense. Chapter one starts with a scene of a murder that we still don't know much about, mm. or at least I don't. Then it swaps to Keiichi sitting in a train to go to Hinamizawa. Mm -hmm. And then virtually all of the game follows Keiichi, mm -hmm. except for some tips which are from the perspective of somebody else, sometimes. But at the end, Keiichi dies. Mm -hmm. And then the perspective for canonically in chapter or in episode shifts to oh, Oishi-san. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the time loop, just a plain old time loop would make sense if we get to still experience something that would technically be outside of a time loop. Unless the time loop doesn't specifically apply to Keiichi, it applies to everybody in Hinamizawa and the surrounding areas, because how else would we have had a moment with o or as Oishi-san after the fact? A higgly wriggly day to you as well, Martin Art. How Hello, Martin Art. Happy Wednesday. How are you doing? I hope you brought your cannibalism bib, I think is the word. Well, we kept talking about time loop yesterday, but I'm actually not 100% sure yet if there is a time loop. Wait, I'm can, still... Wait, can you just let that settle in so that uh, Psycho can facepalm someone? No, 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 I am still I on want, the same part. I want to part. see a... Come on, Tifa! Jesus fucking Christ! Just accept no, it! No, because I'm... <laughs> Unlike you, close I enough. I'll take it. Thank you. One hundred. I am one hundred percent certain that we are not in one timeline, and I've said that already. There is no way chapter two fits right on top of chapter one. Like yeah, and enough things have happened in chapter two that it cannot be the same happenstance as timeline from chapter one. We made progress since yesterday. Yes, I've had like... I've mentioned that like so many streams and you were like, oh no, this is not I've possible. I've had like 20 <laughs> hours to consolidate <laughs> the facts inside my brain. Great, I prepared a copy pasta for this. <laughs> now it's ruined. What do you mean? <laughs> Post it anyway, please. I would love that. No, but still, I'm not sure if it's a time loop or, like I said before, completely different stories. Nah, there's, I there's, still there's, think there's no it could multiverse. be a multiverse sort of thing. And I'm not saying that because the multiverse thing is so popular. But in the end, we have to solve something. That's the whole point of this visual novel, right? And I think in each chapter, we get a different version of how something is. Mm -hmm. well, because every time so far, when something has changed in the story, we got a bit more information or new information 
compared to the previous chapter. The question is what part of the information is the important part that we should draw our focus to? Is it the differences or is it the things that keep being the same? Yeah, but there it mostly is the same, but there's stuff added to it. And I think we're now going through the chapters, see different perspectives from the story or however you want to say it, with new information every time. And all of that together will answer whatever we need to answer by the end of it. But also, who is going to answer anything? Well, we. What do you, who is we? I think it will be us as the player, or maybe they're gonna go with Oishi. So. But there is something new in every chapter. But how would the... Assuming it's a character in the story, how would they be able to answer the question unless we're bringing in something like the morphogenetic field? Somebody will need to become aware that they need to do something to break history from repeating itself in different flavors. Well, I don't know how the game will look like after, what was it, four chapter story? Four chapters? Four questions and four answer arcs. Yeah. Whatever how, that means. How we're going to go through these answer arcs or something. But I think in these four chapters, if it's not going to be a time loop sort of thing, they are individual. I really could think you've got to see them as individual chapters. And I think the fact that you can buy the chapters separately should be, is also a giveaway by itself, if I think about it. Like it seems a nice detail to add to that. And I think all of that, you just have to learn to look at it from the other point of view that they're giving you. Pick out the details that you're then going to use in the last arc. Choose your own curse, basically. <laughs> so I stick to multiverse. Or time loop, but I'm gonna go. With... <laughs> you can't have multiple theories. You gotta commit to one. Well, I'm not fully sure yet what it's going to be because there's been no indication yet about the time loop, technically. Other than history literally starting over, yeah. Yeah, but there's like no hint technically that we have for in the game for the character. So I really do think it's what I've said first. You've got to look at it as different things. Hello Dark Lord, happy Wednesday. You learn something new every chapter. Yeah, even Do if, we vote? Yeah, but it is. You get more details about what's going on. Like when it comes about the history of the damn thing and the whole village fighting against it. We've gotten the story in chapter one. What is the truth? Is the truth for parts of the stories that overlap? Or is it the entirety of the stories we learn? I think we need chapter 3 to answer that at the moment. But the bits that overlap are the same. Just stuff got added to it. In the things we have learned in chapter 1 and chapter 2, there's been no contradictions. Yes. They didn't say... Yes, oh, there was. Xion. Which one? Did you know about Xion in chapter 1? No, we no. didn't. But Xion is not a contradiction. Yes, Xion did not exist in chapter 1. Not existing is something else than not mentioned. I think it's very fair to assume that if the character of Xion had existed in chapter 1, that would have been at least alluded to at some point. And I don't remember Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I'm saying. I don't remember there being things like, oh, when they said that everybody fell down, you heard one extra thud. Or, mm, Shion was conveniently sitting right outside of a camera frame the entire game. No, but the only reason Shion in chapter two is now a part is because we met Shion when we went there. We've gone to Angel Mort once. In chapter one? Multiple, Who, no, twice. Once or twice. Two times out of several months. Who said she was even working? And don't forget, we even went during school while skipping because Oishi took us for lunch when we called in sick. Xion had no reason to work in the, in the restaurant. So we also wouldn't have seen her and gone like, hey, this girl looks like Mion. So not being mentioned is not the same as not existing. Yes. I, I agree with you, Martin, not with that, but I don't agree with you with that. Because 
something like the events with Shion and Mion happening is so big, so character shaping that I don't see any plausible way why this would have never been brought up during the events of chapter one. Because there was no need to bring her in. There was plenty of moments. Every single time Mion snapped and went full murder face. Why do they need to bring in Shion for that? They also don't, didn't bring in Xion mm, for that now either. Maybe to, because so far it hasn't happened, so this version of KG doesn't have anything to worry about. I would imagine if already in my mind I did the mental gymnastics to consider is this now actually Mion or is this now actually Xion I'm talking to? When suddenly the Mion I know begins to go, what was it? the eyes of a raptor and she goes for angry stuff. And what if they later go, hey, that was Xion? Why would anyone mention Xion? If we didn't meet Xion ourselves now, the no one would have mentioned Xion either. Are you listening to yourself? Yeah, there's hmm. no contradiction. Let me speak then. Hmm, the character that I'm great friends with is suddenly acting very out of character. Hmm, there's a character who looks exactly like this character, but who behaves very different. Maybe there's a connection, but this is never brought up. Yeah, because we never met that character. That character does not need to be brought up for it still be able to be the thing that you're trying to say. Okay, wait, I, I, I don't think I was actually following you then. You're saying Xion existed in the events of chapter one, but Keiichi just never met her? Yes. Nah. Nah. So how, how was Keiichi supposed to meet Xion? Thank you, Matanard. I am glad you guys are following me. I think Mortenard is un that's what we've been saying. <laughs> See Mortenard, when you say it, I begin to understand. Tifa just really sucks at explaining things. <laughs> was, I, was I that unclear? Like, Are you I swapping was... theories now? Now Jack is proposing multiverse, or am I going crazy? <laughs> no, Jack is still not in the multiverse. I'm in the multiverse. <laughs> I'm saying... I'm not swapping theories either. My theories were still either time loop or multiverse or morphogenetic field or no, unreliable no, no. narrator that or is brain you. damage well, what the fuck is the last five minutes about? <laughs> thinking out loud and being very confused Jack i is fully saying... believe oh yeah i okay no let, let's hear this no 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 go for no, it no 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 we've had enough jack's planning it's time for tifa's planning come on fuck it up no, you believe because something has not been shown. It's too warm for this shit. It, it really is. It can't be the case. Like Xion, what can't be the case? Xion not being reason. mentioned in chapter one is like some sort of contradiction for you. Yes. But it's not. There was no. The way we met Xion in chapter two was because of a. Wait, I saw Evie. It's because Keiichi's dad was horny. Mm -hmm. Which was not the case in chapter one. We didn't have this thing. The moments we were in Angel Mort were moments where we could have met Xion, but she wasn't there. But that doesn't mean she doesn't exist. Just because you now don't see your neighbor doesn't mean he doesn't exist somewhere. That's exactly how that works. You've never met our very top neighbors. Yeah, clearly they don't exist. They're just a name that appears every time I walk past them. That's, yeah, that's, how li that's how life works. All the people I meet randomly on the street don't exist. Like, if they walk past me, eventually the memory in the buffer will just run full and they'll get deleted off of the world. It's like in a video game. You can't prove that they're still alive. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's like Schrodinger's neighbor. Go, go knock the door, see if they're there. If there's no one in this area on the map, do the NPCs still walk around? Yeah, that's a good question. Depends on the game, but sometimes I do, yes. I still don't understand why she was trying to go with explaining how I was thinking, but here's, here's my take. But first, Mortonaut. Chapter 1, Keiichi's dad is horny on the down low. Chapter 2, Keiichi's dad is horny on main. <laughs> If that actually turns out to be the reason for all of this, I'm gonna... I don't know what I'll be. <laughs> I'll take it, I guess. Here's what I'm thinking. 
I don't... Wait, let me try to preface this. The game poses... Get the prediction file in the meantime. As, right here. The game poses as one of the central points of the questions Keiichi and you as the reader get asked. Do you believe that there is a curse? And everything they're telling you is like, oh, in the history of Hinamizawa, they say that the people believed this, there is a myth. We don't actually have any proof of any supernatural things happening. Everything that we have witnessed so far can be attributed to people doing these things. That is true. At no point have we seen aliens or Oyashiro-sama get uh, dropped out of the sky from the heavens to tell us that we're committing heresy and he needs to punish us. You know, the Jesus beat thing. So I maintain my stance that the entirety of Higurashi will not confirm nor deny the existence of supernatural beings or influences or anything of this sort. The most likely reason or the most cerebral way I can work in time seemingly looping characters being there, sometimes not being there, is what I said at the end of last stream. This is told from the perspective of a character who is, I don't know, in a psych ward. Maybe Keiichi has done or witnessed something horrible at some point and the different versions we're being told are like him explaining maybe to a nurse, maybe to a psychiatrist, I don't know, the things that have happened in his life. And that's why between the chapters there's differences. For all I know, that could even like explain the post game get together because if you're telling the story and it's all like like a show you're watching or a book you're reading you're relaying the story to somebody it doesn't matter what the characters do after the story is told they might as well just be actors you know but in that story they were talking about being actors and following a script and wondering what would happen in chapter two which is what i just said yeah. yes so I truly believe the game is gonna end somehow open-ended and the question remains, do you believe that there was a curse or do you believe that there is a scientific approach to this? Something else that explains how all of the things you just witnessed make sense. And because of that, I still don't think there's an actual time loop, but there has to be a reason why we, as the reader, witness time starting over and the events being slightly different. I really think it's to see things from all angles. But whose angle? Whose angle are we seeing right now? The angles of the story. Through Keiichi's eyes. But Keiichi can't have been everywhere. But he's or, now or, slowly getting everywhere, may, isn't he? Maybe he... yeah, but... If Wait. we're going with my crazy old Keiichi theory, the question remains what is truth and what is fiction? I think it's too early to say that. We're not even at the end of chapter 2. This whole thing is like 80 hours. Still, yes. I think you want too much. You mean 80 hours? We've already played for 80 hours and we're in chapter 2. Norm at normal speed, it's ah, 80 okay. hours. It's like, you always already want like the end answers to everything. Like the moment you start. How I am with movies, you are with games. No. 10 I'm, minutes in of the movie, no. I ask like, who's that and what's he gonna do? I'm that way with every story because right now, Tifa, we're talking about why do you think this is happening? So yeah, I have to think six chapters ahead to try to reconcile why the things that we have seen already could possibly make sense. Yeah, but I don't think sometimes you have to make those big leaps already. Okay, so if any of you ask, what do you think is gonna happen? I will just give you some variation of what I just said, unless we learn new things. And Tifa will go, no, I don't no, no, know, no. ask me at the end. For the past chapter, you've been going full speed towards the end and how it should look like that you stubbornly held on to the, this is one storyline. Like I can grab chapter two, as a puzzle piece and I can just smash it on top of chapter one and it will fit. 
because you've already been thinking ahead on how this is all going to be one big picture and it wasn't until 10 minutes ago that you actually started you didn't even say that that was wrong that you actually just went like oh no i was thinking this all along but that's a different that's a different point can I just really quickly tell you all how happy I am to be in this relationship? Because... Me too. <laughs> you don't sound like it right now. <laughs> because, listen, um, so many couples that I know and that I know about have a problem that one of them or both of them never change their mind. They are so stuck with their opinions, their beliefs, their whatevers, that they keep clashing over this. This is the only relationship I know of in the history of mankind. Maybe, maybe I'm a pioneer in that regard. Where I get crapped on by her for, for changing my mind. <laughs> like, because I'm accepting that things that I don't believe in might be true, this one gets off the worst Do you angry. see how? Because you then jump on my theory every <laughs> single this? game and then go like, yeah, I said this all along. You, you can't agree with me now this after, was my after theory. 20 more hours driving at home that I might have been right from the beginning. <laughs> this is not allowed. Like, I went with this all along. <laughs> like, that is my problem. You can absolutely swap your mind, but then just go like, hey. Change your mind, I don't swap my mind. Change your mind. Then just go like, hey, you know what? Yeah, chapter one and two don't match. I think you might be onto something. But the thing is, Tifa, I... <laughs> I can't do that because it's way funnier to present it the way I usually do. <laughs> Ultimately, it comes down to the same thing, but the way I choose to tread is way more entertaining to me. <laughs> the steps that Psycho <laughs> Step explained. Step one, stick to your own theory no matter what. Step two, change your mind. Step three, gaslight everyone that you knew all along. That should be like your copy pasta. I, I mean, I love watching TV's expression when Jack told, I don't even know what my expression is right now, but I can imagine. It's, it's... honest, I can tell you that. Because <laughs> I could see eyebrows it. fully up. Your face was going through emotions, yes. You can have Jack write down these theories, you can lock them in. I do write them down. I, I do take notes. Not for a long time, but... I think we should start... You can disprove them as we go along. We can do that. I think we should start writing dates at these things because I remember last time we had some Please that do. overlapped and I am 100% sure that I had it first but we couldn't prove it anymore because we couldn't find the darn video where we discussed it. Do we have a Jack command? All right, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take <laughs> it. Do you want me to copy it? Yes, please. <laughs> I like that. It shall be done during the break. I, I wouldn't call it gaslighting everyone, but... Uh convincing with creative steps <laughs> are you okay your face is doing things again <laughs> <laughs> talking about copy pasta i'm sorry i asked you, you to post it but then i ignored it because i was in the middle of ranting here's psycho's og copy pasta fun fact it is said that the amount of gold which humanity has unearthed so far is around 202,582 metric tons, which is still not enough to mint the gold medal for Jack's <laughs> mental gymnastics. Why am I even going to the gym? Like, why my brain is so efficient that I can have all of these thoughts and I still gained weight before I went to the gym. You know? Like, Im imagine the amount of... Like calories, my, my huge brain is burning doing all of this. <sighs> that coffee pasta of all. Your wish is my command. I do gotta credit you though, because you do come indeed with great mental gymnastics, even <laughs> though some are a little bit far fetched. Also, I can't find the coffee pasta. Where is it? Uh, but done. No, up. I know I sat down, but I meant up. 
That's what it's like to live with you. Up. Keep going, Still keep up. going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep... There. You could have just done Control F. Oh, fun yeah. Oh, yeah, I could have done that. Exclamation <sighs> mark, Jack. It, it will be done later, after the break, most likely. Not. I'm ready. just copying the text so that we don't have to yeah. look through chat. I was thinking that one up for hours. I am truly blessed and honored to have that in my repertoire. Thank you very much. <laughs> can never spend oh, all that gold. Goes. It'd be like billions. I would use all of my newfound wealth to hire like-minded people who also very much enjoy mental gymnastics. To brainstorm with me. We could uh, create the ultimate think tank, you know? <laughs> Shit posting is my passion. <laughs> you need to put that into like your Tinder bio or something if you have a... Mixed up the commands there. Hey Jack! <laughs> oh god, yeah. You're saying a lot of stuff about what happens meta textually. What's going to happen to Keiichi now? How about I answer that by not answering it right now and instead first asking Tifa to please tell us what happened the last time we played Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 2 Watanagashi. I know my cadence implied there was more sentence, mm -hmm. but I've had finished. I was just yeah. like giving you a moment to like get it out. Mm -hmm. The last time we played was actually pretty good, I have to say. Hello Snowy. Happy Snowy, Wednesday. how are you how doing? Are you doing? Welcome into the recap. We were at the Watanagashi Festival. Things were going great. We were having lots of fun. It was time for Rika to have her performance. We were super looking forward to it. While we were going towards the stage, it was crowded. We unfortunately lost our friends. Because of the power of Moe. Basically. And we wanted to find like a good spot to still watch the performance anyway. And we would find them later. But when all the tall people were standing in front of us, Basically, kind of ruined it. So while looking for a place, we actually found Mion, a uh, uh, Shion. Sorry. No Mion. We ran into Shion, and Shion was. We thought like... we saw Mion. And Shion was like, "Hey, follow me." So we were like, "Oh, she knows a good spot." Oh, we're gonna Shion her. must lead me to a secret hidden place where I got the perfect view of Rika performing her ritual dance. I shall follow her. <laughs> Despite walking behind the stage and the building where yeah, Rika away. was performing. We just kept walking and walking until we were somewhere still on the shrine grounds. But way out of sight of what was happening. But way out of sight and we were like, what the fuck, why did I follow you? And Shion was like, hey, look at now, this. Now there's a boy and a girl and they're alone. <laughs> and then Keiji was like, doki doki. But then Shion was like... Not Doki Doki. Yeah, no no Doki Doki. No Hanky Panky. Look, there's two people over there doing things. Let's watch them. Basically, we found Tomi Take and... Shitake. Takano. Oh yeah, Shita. Now I was like, no, that's not her name. Now Worked in my shitty joke from last time. My job here is done. That's the end of the stream. Good night, everybody. Tommy Taki and Takano. At a warehouse slash full-fledged temple from the looks of it. And they were trying to pick the lock that was at the door. Yes. Obviously, we confronted them. Because that's what you do. They we were... didn't confront them. They heard us. Oh yeah, true, okay. Because Keiichi was like whisper shouting. And then we confronted them. And basically, Tommy Taki, uh, not Tommy Taki, sorry. Takano has a very macabre interest and wants to know more about what exactly is in the temple. Where, I'm gonna call it temple now, Warehouse. where only the Furude family and a handful of extremely trusted people are allowed to enter. Otherwise, you bring impurity upon the whole holiness of the warehouse. The kind of place Tifa wouldn't be allowed entrance to. Basically, but would really want to. I would, be, I would probably do the same. <laughs> so they managed to pick the lock. Tomitake decided to stay outside because apparently he wasn't that interested and to keep guard. Also, it smelled of mold and dust. You could tell nothing was really happening in there a lot. We went in with Chion, Takano and Keiichi. 
And after getting through, we finally entered the torture room that was in the intro as well. Yes, Modernard, we found the non-sexy kink dungeon. We found... No, well, this, this is a kink dungeon. Let's not have that argument again. It takes too long. You only have two dungeons. A dungeon and a kink dungeon. We found the kink dungeon. And we were like all shocked, like, what the fuck is this? And then... No, 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 no. Keiichi was like, this looks sure. really boring. This is like tools for carpentry yeah, sure. and stuff. What's interesting about that? And then Takano did the thing that nobody thought possible. Takano started talking about a topic that is somehow near and dear to Tifa's gut and heart. <laughs> Takano started going like, well, the history of Hinamizawa is related to these demons that came out of a swamp, the Onigafuchi swamp, and then the demons started killing the villagers. And then they couldn't do anything about that because the, vic the villagers were the victims, they were helpless, they didn't have the power to fight back. So they prayed really hard to their guardian deity, Oyashiro-sama. And then Oyashiro-sama came from the heavens and he talked to the demons. And then the demons were like, no, we're sorry. We're only doing this because we have no place to go. We were rejected by hell itself. And then Oyashiro-sama went, that's okay, you're kind of hot. I want the villagers to fuck you. So the demons <laughs> were made into, that's true. The, villa, the demons were turned into humans who then started intermingling with the villagers who accepted them as part of their town in return for being taught some of their powers and spells and whatnot. And then Oyashi or Sama went like, now that's the pawn I want to watch, I'm going to stay here too. <coughs> and that happened back then. So over time, the demon people together with the villagers intermingled. And the funny thing is, the demons, because they also were so were grateful... Also those exact words, you can quote me from that. The demons, being so grateful they could stay, shared some of their knowledge about their powers and stuff. But mm -hmm. the people who actually then inherited like those powers through mm -hmm. the mingling were considered like bad. And it was like heresy, which some, seemed like really Despite weird. their god sanctioning this, making all of this happen, they considered it heresy. No explanation why. It, it, that's just how it is. Unfortunately, there was another downside to it. Sometimes the demon blood would take over the human part of them and they started craving human flesh. Exactly. O Oyashira-sama being the great god that he is, started knowing everything. knowing everything, started pointing out people that they could eat as a sacrifice. From the basically. other villages, because Hinamizawa, best Hinamizawa, you know, xenophobia needs to start somewhere. We are better than everybody else. We are at least half demons at this point. So fuck everybody else. You look like a snack and I mean but in the literal sense. <laughs> so once a year, which happens to be the night of the Watanagashi, people were chosen to get eaten. Because Watanagashi is actually Japanese for what was it? Gut uh, removal night? Wata was entrails. Oh yeah, they, it's the entrails festival. And then Takano explained to us, didn't you watch Rika do the dance and stuff? The, the movement? They use these tools not to destroy a futon and then get the cotton on and then do a thing. No, it's all based on the performance from way back when. When they went and got the sacrifices that they wanted to like snack on, they would get them and then they would use the ritual hoe to remove their guts like that. And then we spent the next 16 hours discussing in depth and detail cannibalism uh, torture practices, how to kill people in the most gruesome ways possible in ancient Rome by grilling them and some such. So Snowy, the question, did more cannibalism happen? Yes. <laughs> that was 90% of what happened last stream actually. You'd also kind of think that they would just kill them and eat them, but no. there was actually a lot of torture involved yes. and sometimes over slow periods of time, like not immediate kill and eat? While not told to us, 
by Takano or the, the visual storytelling from the room, it very much seemed like they wanted to devour their prey while still alive. Yeah, so we still have like the open question, does the does it taste better to them if... That's not a question. That is, that is still an open question. Does it taste better oh to the God. demons if your victim is more like stressed and in fear and stuff? But that's not something that has been answered yet. I don't think it will be. Probably not. We are currently still in the torture room. We're still going through the history of what is... Uh, still going through the history of the city. And I'm guessing someone is gonna find Yes, find because us. Tifa left out of thing near the beginning. After we had started trespassing and got into the warehouse, Kate, she was like, let me let me look around. Oh wait, there's a there's a what are they called? Switch box? Yeah, he turned on the lights in the warehouse yeah, he for a few flicked seconds. Flicked the switch, turned on the light, she unslapped him, turned off the light again, but you know, if you see light flickering in a warehouse that people aren't supposed to enter off in the distance, yeah. I'm pretty sure the people of Hinamizawa are gonna be standing outside the warehouse and we're not gonna be happy when we're done here. I also don't really think that is gonna be the reason why we're find out, found out. Because the warehouse we're in is also where the ritual hoe that Rika is currently using during her performance is stored. Yeah. So I'm guessing when the performance is done, someone will come back and wants to store the hoe. Yes. So I someone will come it. regardless. Or potentially they will not just return with the tool, the ritual implement to use their terms. Maybe they will also come with a human sacrifice that they want to eat. I have a feeling that when we want to leave, Tomitake is missing. Leading us into the question, what do you think is going to happen now? Um, yeah, something like that. I think he won't be outside. I'm 50-50 on whether just Tomitake is gone, like gone for good, we will not see him ever again, we will just learn about his death at some point, or if actually the four of us will be caught. Yeah, I'm not sure, I'm gonna guess... That somebody gonna get dead. That we're gonna stick to the same deaths, as in Tomitake... And Tanako during the festival. Takano. So ta Takano. So I'm curious to see Nanako. if that will come true now as well. Mm -hmm. Because I'm also assuming that in chapter one, while we were actually watching the festival, they were doing the exactly same thing, trying to break into the warehouse in the meantime, got caught and killed and eaten. And now we just get to see it from a different point of view where that is actually happening. Possibly. Traditional terror you, and fits. stress make meat tough and chewy. Yeah, but maybe hmm. demons like it like that, I guess. That's the unanswered question. Just because us as regular consumers that eat meat would not want the meat to be like this. Mm. Maybe the demons really enjoy that? I don't know. I remember for the longest time um, when I was still eating meat. Like whenever we had like pork chops or anything from pork, I would always overcook it. Not for like health reasons or anything, just because I liked the texture better. Like when pork or, or chicken for example is just cooked, I mean it's done, you're not gonna get sick from it, but it still has this like slightly, slightly chewy juiciness to it. I know some people really prefer that. Mm -hmm. I just hate that. I need. I always need my meat to be dead. Like, I'd rather it be too dry when I add like a sauce or something to it versus it being like the Raw. way the gourmands would eat it. I guess. Are you ready? No. To get some answers. But if I would like answers, but I'm not ready for them. Can Are you ready? Press the button. Yes, you can. Click. Click. Continue. Uh, Seven did I... and eight, I think. No, four. <laughs> I did not say anything. But yeah, right. Shion and Keiji are obviously scared at this point. As anybody would be. <laughs> Time to spill some guts at the Cotton Drifting Festival. It's actually entrails? Water in Japanese? <laughs> 
Oh, and obviously at some point the festival swapped to using actual humans during the festival for display to futons. Yeah, we don't know when, though, because... The performance Rika is enacting is basically cutting a human, but with yeah. futon. That seems like a very vegetarian thing to do. Like, humans are comparatively hard to hunt down. A futon doesn't run away. Mm -hmm. Seems definitely better. Shame you can't eat it. I mean, you can. It's just not good for you. I, I, do, I do not eat mattresses and futons. Like, no. Nah. Takano-san, having realized she'd scared Shion and I enough at this point, smiled soothingly. Then she turned on her heel, raised the lantern and began to walk again. Walk. If Takano-san left us here, we'd get even further away from the light. Shion and I, no matter how scared we were, we were forced to follow Takano-san along on a field trip through the ritual storehouse. Nothing stops you from going back though. Yes, the ability to see. Do you need an extra hand? No. I suppose we've seen a bit of everything. After you doing this to your eye and the first word being eye, I thought you were talking about your... <laughs> no, it's a bit irritated. I don't think it's gonna get better if you keep doing that. Mm. I'll have a look during our break. I'll help you. Just keep it close today. <laughs> See? <laughs> I mean, partially. <laughs> Not really. This place is interesting, isn't it? She says, raising the lantern high in the center of the storehouse. The dim lighting didn't change, but for some reason it felt like I was able to see all of those horrible tools at once. Kei-chan! Look up! She stammered while grabbing the nape of my neck. I'm guessing they see the cages now? Uh... I couldn't tell because it was so dark, but... There were a lot more tools hanging from the ceiling as well. They all looked like they were made of iron bars, but then I figured it out. Cages. For cages? They were very small. Cramped cages, just for one, like a casket. If you got locked up in there, you wouldn't get locked up inside it. It was another tool meant for restraining people, where the iron bars would squeeze you tightly. Although so many big and large things of our shapes were hanging down. Takano-san's mention of executing by grilling crosses my mind. We weren't just surrounded on all sides by these terrifying instruments. Things crowding the ceiling were even hanging over our heads. There are many of these sort of bird cages among European torture devices. I'm surprised to see them in Japan as well. Keichan? Is there something in there? A person? A mummy? Yes, they uh, went all the way to Egypt to get a traditional mummy. Uh, where? She desperately pointed to one of the many human-sized bird cages hanging from the ceiling, but I couldn't tell which one she meant. Being that dark, there wasn't any way you could tell if something was there in the first place. I don't see anything. Are you sure you're not seeing things? Oh, that's the worst when your mind is like so full of terror that in the haze of a darkness you begin to imagine that you see things. You see all the shadows move in the corner of your eye. Yeah, it's like uh, like when you wake up in the morning and it's still dark in the room and you like you open your eyes and you glance and there's like like a chair in the corner of your room and suddenly it looks like there's a person standing there mm. because you threw a shirt over it or something. It's like, ah! Yep. She didn't seem convinced, but without a means to confirm for ourselves, we couldn't do much but wonder. My Barracoon, after seeing this, have you come to believe in all of it? The countless terrible rituals passed down in Hinamizawa? It's got nothing to do with believing in them. Now that I've been shown the real thing like this, there's no possible way to deny it. Oh, he here we go. What did we do, huh? Oh yeah, there was still one bit. Um, oh yeah, it it's was the about... fault of the Dutch people. 
<laughs> Basically, there's two stories. Either those that believe that demons came out of the swamp and started the whole story. Or it was foreigners, foreigners coming yes. to land, mingling with them. Europeans, to be exact. Uh, what was it? The, the foreign drifter theory? Yeah. Assuming that people from Europe who shipwrecked at sea were then brought by the ocean motion waves uh, to the coast of Japan and then lived there. And because of them looking so different compared to the people that are born in Japan at the time, uh, they became the stuff of legend, the demons, like the red demon and because the their paleness made them get sunburns easily or the blue demons because of being able to see their veins and stuff, stuff like that. Yep. I'm pretty sure this is how Shogun starts. <laughs> haven't seen it. And one last Japan, small detail that I think is important is about the deaf and missing person that was also explained in the myth because the dead person's obviously being eaten and the missing person was sacrificed in the swamp to be drowned in the bottlenose hole. Something like that. Yeah. Even the nations of Europe with all their beautiful landscapes and legends were like a maelstrom during the terrible witch hunt in the Dark Ages. It's well known that the era gave birth to countless gruesome forms of torture and execution. In Japan was the same way. Didn't it have its own era of hellscape-like torturous feasts because of religious suppression and things of that nature? Hinamizawa itself had such a period. It had that much history behind it. Even in Europe, land of a witch hunt that was all far in the past, no more than a series of historical events, and in this age nothing that abnormal would ever happen. That must apply to Hinamizawa as well. You good? Can we take a short break? Yes, we can. I think I need to check my eye. Yes, you should. I kind of expected that 10 minutes ago, but yes. You can all ponder what horrible things have been done in your country while we'll be taking a short eye break for tea fight. <laughs> BRB. BRB. We're back. Yes, we are. And I didn't get to add the commands. Discord isn't loading on my computer for some reason. Sorry about that. Next stream. Potentially, hopefully. Japan was strictly anti-Christian after the Jesuits tried to conspire against their military government. All right. <laughs> that seems... Do you know all of this just because of Higurashi? Or do you also have an interest in the topic and it just happens to cover the same Study area history before. I mean, either way is cool, but like I, like we talked about last time, like... <laughs> There's so much that... Are you good? Now my nose is itchy. Oh my god, she washed her face to see whatever was on her face to get that out of her eye and... <laughs> it's never good with you, is it? <laughs> yeah, I watched Bill Wirtz's history of oh, Japan. Yeah. That's what I still need to watch, thank you. Even then, even if I would watch something like that, I don't think it would stick, honestly. Like, all the knowledge you've dropped so far, I think... A few tidbits might have stuck around, but like all of it. Probably yeah, not. she said tidbits. Oh my. oh my god, get your shit together, woman. <laughs> You're welcome. Also, what? What did you do with your face during the break, lady? I washed my face. Are you sure? Yeah. That video will stick. Okay. Write that down. <laughs> The you will need to will move stay. your hand. No, but we need to watch Bill Wirtz's History of Japan. I'm quite sure I already got that here somewhere. But I can she edit doesn't. this bill. No, yesterday I did actually look it up. Uh, great, why did we not watch it? Because I had to go to bed. It's an island nation, it's beautiful. I sent it. Thank you, Dark Lord. I want to commend you for your hard work and good nature. I do not want to commend Tifa for her laziness. Just as Europe had its dark age, Inamizawa had one too. That's how this should be taken. 
even if these things all really happen in Hinamizawa, they are all long past. Obviously. They don't have anything to do with the people living in Hinamizawa right now. Okay, Chi, that's not how that works. My Barakun, you really do like this village. Of course, I always have. I always have considered myself an integral part of a Hinamizawan society. I mean, I might have been born and lived in Tokyo for the longest part of my life, but in my heart of hearts, I've always been Hinamizawan. And it wasn't until I moved here that I got to actually feel fulfilled for the first time in my life. Don't his parents come from here at least? We don't know. Isn't that why we came back here? We don't know. Huh. I love you, but you're being very disruptive to the floor of the stream today. <laughs> I can't help it. It didn't sound like she was making fun of me. Takano-san gave me a light smile. Can we have this conversation outside though? Because like this is not the time and place. It's very hard to put your finger on how long are we actually in here. Le way less long than we're lingering on these parts. Probably like has five minutes passed, but because even for five minutes, this story was too long. We must have been in here for like 50 minutes. I think it's closer to a quarter of an hour. We interrupt a lot, mostly you. You can give me that look all you want, you know it's true. What's a quarter of an hour? 15 minutes. What? What? We must have been in here for 15 minutes. You said 50. No, 15. And he's like, no, it's more like quarter of an hour. Oh, and I would have me. understood you referred to the third. See, now I start like a... I'm so fancy. I don't say 15 minutes. I say quarter of an hour. I thought you had said 50 minutes, which I found weirdly specific, <laughs> but I just decided to go with it. Viertelstunde, yeah, exactly. It's not that hard. <laughs> Read your line, Shion. Takano-san, you're researching whether those customs survived in the present? You are right? No, you are right. Yeah, that's... I messed it up with my first letter. You could do it again. No, it's good. Okay. It's the same words. The true horror is listening to her. <laughs> That's what the sound effect is yeah. for. <laughs> she suggested something that made my heart leap into my throat. Are you telling me that all of these horrible things are still going on even today? Have we forgotten the every year someone dies and disappears story? <laughs> After 400 weeks down in this basement of the warehouse, oh, back room, not basement, <laughs> what I'm about to tell you now is a secret, all right? What I'm about to tell you is a secret, all right? I told you, Xi'an Xi'an Chan. I told you, Xi'an Chan, because you're an understanding person, but the other villagers don't want to hear it. If things go. Oh, right. Yeah, I know, but I. Uh, I Are you good? Swallowed me. If things go awry, my nose relates you. <laughs> okay, wait, one sec. Do something <laughs> about a, your nose. It's distracting. <sighs> If we were actually like recording voiceovers, I think this is the day where you just call in sick for the rest of the night. Yes, like, like I, I give Sorry, up. everybody, can we pick this up again tomorrow? Because my face is not doing it. If things go awry, I could be ganged up on and punished. Shion flashed a devilish smile as if reveling in the immorality of it. My Barakun, you keep it a secret too, okay? If this gets out, I could suffer Oyashira-sama's curse, or be made into a sacrifice. If it's the curse, then I wonder what kind of death it will be this year. If it's the sacrifice, then will I be thrown into the Onigafuchi swamp while still alive? It is tonight, you know. 
the night of Oyashira Sama's curse. I had to bite my lips so hard. Next thing, an oil change symbol pops up above the head. <laughs> I wish I would have had the, the creative foresight of making something like that happen with the overlays. Be that's something that needs to exist. And the beautiful thing is because of how Tifa is sitting and how shorter she is compared to me, like there, there is space here that we can use for that. That is true. Thank you for putting <laughs> Thank you for putting that thought into my head. Go write that down, Tifa. I don't have a pen here. What oil change Actually, no. symbol? I don't think that's Stop. something. You're though. too slow. <laughs> Editor, be sure to edit <laughs> in the Tifa oil change line. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. But maybe next time. There we go. Takano Sunset bringing her face right up close to ours. As if to say that if she had the choice, she'd rather suffer the curse. That was what she seemed to be implying. Takano-san took a fairly worn notebook out of her paperback and began to flip through its pages. There were all sorts of references and newspaper clippings attached to them, and it had all manner of things written inside. I yes, think, those are the ones I from think, the tips. Yeah, this proves that it's her scrapbook, I want to say. Yeah. The letters were very small and bunched together, so I couldn't tell at a glance what it was about. What I'd really like to do is search through the National Library for newspapers from the era, but... What makes you think they would actually allow something about this to be published? Here it is. A photocopy of a page from some book was slid into the notebook and it too was written in small tight lettering. Like the other pages, I couldn't tell what it was about just by glancing at it. This is a story that actually happened. It was around the end of the Meiji area, uh, era. They discovered an unknown mangled corpse, the victim of a murder, in Onigafuchi village. Talking about periods and eras, if this happened during the Meiji era, wouldn't it be kind of poetic if it happened again? Because now we're in the Keiichi era <laughs> and it rhymes? No, it doesn't. Well, yes it does. But... I would have appreciated a little bit more like Positive attitude towards my attempt. Uh, three out of ten. Three out. Okay. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Exactly. <laughs> the late Meiji era would be the late 1910s. Alright. An old newspaper clipping attached to the page spoke of something that was no mere rumor or fairy tale. We don't have most police documents from the time anymore, so it's all based on oral traditions and memories. See? It's not very clear, but it looks like a cutout of a newspaper from the Meiji era. Never before has there been a corpse treated with such cruelty and inhumanity. Could it be the work of a demon? Being a copy of a copy, it was very hard to make out, but it was more than enough to make me feel strangely tense. Slant rams get no applause, Jack. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried. Tree for effort. It still hurts, but I'll take it. Near the end of a Meiji era, in an old Onigafuchi village, a mangled corpse was discovered. The identity of a corpse was unknown. It wasn't even in a state where it could be identified in the first place. It was missing a head and each limb was separated from the body. Skin had been peeled off the entire body and there were markings that implied terrible torture in every place imaginable. Not only that, but the belly had been cut open by a sharp knife, with the entrails completely dragged out. The police immediately began an The police immediately began an investigation, but since they couldn't even determine the identity of a victim, much less the criminal, finding answers was extremely difficult. Do you understand what it must have been like? Yeah, gruesome. What are we talking about? I couldn't imagine such a strange sight. Even if I tried, this was the first time I was ever thankful for my lack of imagination. The victim was skinned while still alive, underwent all kinds of torture and was killed brutally. It didn't say skinned, what the fuck? 
Well, at some point the skinning is also enough. Like if you fully skin a body, but it's before you're even done. You're... The author here also thinks that even after death, the remains were divided and dissected even further. The epitome of inhumanity. Thank you for saying it the word it should be said. Because that word should be epitome, not epitome. That's an affront to my mouth. I call supposed... it a flaying. Yeah, but... You're supposed to pronounce that... Epitome. Really? Yes. Oh. But thank you Doesn't for seem right. appealing to my ears. Um, why would they flay the person that they... At, which part of a body do they actually eat? Is it just the guts? Do, do they eat all of it? Is the rest of the body just dismembered for the sake of brutality? To appease your inner piece of shit demon? That wasn't fully clear, I believe. But if yes. you like hack into a human... Like we have already seen like in the device in the back where they go like they strip a bonnet that you get your arms like chopped off. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing the guts are just the tastiest part that all of them want. And the rest is like nice scraps to have. Yeah, but traditionally, that's exactly the point. The muscles and organs are the parts that you eat. Yeah, but they're demons. I want to say different rules might apply. Is, did they skin them? The same reason why some people, like when you have like a rotisserie Wait. chicken, they, they leave the skin for last because it's the tastiest part. This, that really depends, like it has to be crispy if anything, but I think it's more like a grape. You what? get rid, like when you peel a grape and then Oh my it. god, Tifa, grape peeling is not a thing people do. Plenty of people peel grapes. As has been proven, because Stop I remember Groundhog saying she also peeled grapes. Stop trying to normalize grape peeling. I'm not trying to normalize it, I'm just comparing it to eating humans. Because you have the crunchy, not the crunch, you have the crunchy bit of the skin, which is kind of snappy. But if you like peel Stop that off... Stop also trying... Listen, there's nothing wrong with you peeling your grapes if that's what you want to do. Be my guest, it's no skin off my back. But you... <laughs> The groundhog absolutely doesn't peel no, grapes. No, send, send groundhog a text message. I am 100% sure that groundhog has peeled grapes. 100% sure. Thank you, Psycho. You put it into much shorter terms than I could have, but that's the point I was trying to make. Humans are not grapes. Yeah, I know humans are not grapes, but I'm just comparing... Humans are not grapes. But technically, humans are not humans food either, but we're talking about that anyway. are not grapes. Yeah, I know. But it's the same process. I doubt that. I've never... I've never considered having to think about keeping the grape alive if I were to peel one for you. That, it's, that's not gonna be possible anyway. You can't fully skin a human and keep it alive. Grapes are not humans. Humans are not grapes, Tifa. Yeah, I know. I'm just talking about like the outer layer of the grape. I've, I've tried, people. Can't just be... You know what? I've, I've tried. I, I made my point. Tifa, your mouth is an SCP. <laughs> kind of. She might have done it once at some point, but that's not a thing she does under any normal <laughs> conditions. Source, I've seen her eat grapes many times. No, but I know she used to no, Tifa, peel she... grapes. Or yeah. has peeled grapes before, one of the two. Not or not, just to make Tifa happy. The next time you see Groundhog, and if you happen to have a grape, could you peel it for her? Just, <laughs> just for her, for her sake. Not anymore, but has. Keep your indecent fanfic to yourself. <laughs> Maybe I should publish. No, you should not. Sure. Categorically <laughs> refuse. I can't blame you. Can't blame you. Still waiting for Tifa to read her last line. I am of the opinion that the entire process was performed while the person was still alive, though. What do you think, my Barakun? She's spoken a way intended to make me imagine even more vicious things. What can be more vicious than doing that while the victim is still alive? The news article didn't speak about a flaying. She is adding all of this. Oh, like that. Yeah, fair. 
She is so deep into this that she doesn't even realize. As my brain was already far over capacity, however, there was no way I could imagine anything more brutal. And then when I broke my gaze from takano sons those strangely shaped weird tools were all around us. I wonder if you could faithfully reproduce the mutilated corpse discovered at the end of a Meiji era with the tools found in this place. I want to deny it. I don't want to admit that something so terrible could have happened at all. Even so, they were so strange, so terrifying, these tools, and as if I had seen through my attempt to escape from them, they did nothing but ridicule me silently. So, that creepy incident, what was it in the end? The author says that regarding Onikafuchi's village dreadful customs, they've survived into recent post-Meiji days and that perhaps they lasted until around the beginning of the Showa period. I want to imagine that anything that has been a tradition for a couple hundred years, potentially, even just 50 years, will still exist in some way, shape or form. Maybe not everybody knows about it, but there will be a group of people that still knows about it. Hmm. This corpse at a glance appeared to have been brutally killed after a period of torture. In actuality, however, it was the pitiful sacrificial remains of a man-eater's terrifying feast. The corpse was just leftovers. It was so fantastic, so strange that it didn't feel real. Was this an extension of the legends too? It happened in the Meiji era, though, which is just too recent to be called a legend. Also, there's a newspaper clipping right here suggesting it. Oh, okay, but even if it really happened, it, it was a long time ago, right? I mean, the Meiji era ended a hundred years ago. That's all. Only a hundred years ago. Besides, it kept happening even after the beginning of the Showa period. Like with the uproar around the post-war canned flesh incident. The post-war canned flesh incident. What did they do after World War II? Did they can people? Also, is, again, is, is this a thing that actually happened? Because... I apologize. If she does not tell the details about this, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> Can we? Oh, I, I think they do, yes. I'm sorry. Never apologize. The only one that should apologize around here is this one. What? Why? Grapes and humans. I don't think that's any worse than now going into a canned flesh story. The amount of comments from specifically Evie about your weird interest in cannibalism, knowing full well that if at some point in the future we would actually go play Higurashi and all of this would be brought upon us. I mean, can't fool me anymore. I'm quite happy, but I'm wondering, like post-war canned flesh, what that could imply. It could be, like, after... We might actually get there. She reads the line and I get to press a button. No, no, that's it. It could be, like, after... Like, the story of after the Battle of... What was the Battle of Waterloo? Where they sold the oh. dead bodies to the sugar factory. Yes, for the bones to bleach for sugar. What if they, in this case, after the war, also sold the, uh, sold the bodies to, like butcher factories and whatnot, and then it just got mixed in in the cans to save costs on meat. That would be horribly messed up, but um, given the infinite depth of depravity of a human mind, combined with the fact that people were facing starvation, yeah, I can see it. I think that makes sense, though. Kind of sweetie toddish. I don't... Yes. I'm pretty sure they shared pie recipes back then. <laughs> Oh wait, that story was taboo, wasn't it? takano san immediately stopped talking as if worried about Shion. Shion briefly looked somewhat angry, but that expression soon disappeared. Huh? takano san what did you just say? Can flash. 
Like now we have to talk about this. Just then there was a huge. Just then there was a huge. Noise. Everyone whipped around to look. It was Tomitake san who had opened the door slightly. Well, he's still alive, at least. <laughs> oh, you didn't know? Oh, I'm sorry, was I not supposed to mention that? <laughs> oh, my apologies. Maybe that is something we're now not gonna go into at all, and that's the new fact we learn in chapter 3. Canned flesh. Yeah. And now Tifa. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, wait, oh. wait, wait, wait. How do you become a demon? By being canned? No. Isn't that also part of some legends that in order to absorb somebody's strength, you eat part of them? Like, I think it was in the in the Nordic tribes that used to roam around what is now Germany, that by being canned, <laughs> same mind, um, that after two warriors battled each other, like one would eat the other's heart to absorb their strength into themselves. What if, what if they canned the flesh to make everybody into demons by canning demon man flesh and therefore the people who would eat it would also become demons because they imbibed the demon meat i don't want that to be true <laughs> that's fucking hilarious spend enough time with people and you're gonna start thinking like them Devils are fallen angels, so I guess being cancelled by God. <laughs> uh, I, I guess. I mean, you do. You did ask a good question. Where do the demons come from, technically? I mean, we know the original demons came out of hell. The next generation were made by Oyashiro Sama telling people to bang. But can it spread further than that? Is it that you have to have children with a part demon person? But we also don't want it to spread further because it's a bad thing, remember? For whatever reason. But why? If I believe I, demon man, am better than you, maybe I can increase my ranks, as in get more people, if I find other people who I believe would be good additions to my group of people and make them into demon people like me. Hmm. Yeah, okay. You know? So we need a can distribution center. Well, we would need people, uh, we would need demon people who are willing to sacrifice themselves to be turned into mincemeat and then can them and then sell them to people who we want to become Honorary Hinamizawans, I guess. The worst thing is, is that I can imagine an entire industry behind this and I can see how it would work. There would 100% be an industry behind it. There really would be. 100%. Given the legislature behind it, Amazon would sell them. <laughs> yes, they would. <laughs> you think I had that thought on my own? Oh, fuck no. I thought you had it. The timing was too good. <laughs> I thought it. I think it was a good thought. <laughs> and did I startle you? Yes, you did. Oh, Jiro san, could you not resist seeing inside? This is a splendid treasure trove of torture devices. I'll pass on that. <laughs> I'm bad with this sort of thing by nature. Takano-san held her stomach and had to muffle her laughter as if she wanted to make a comment about his masculinity. In any case, the dance and ceremony over and everyone's going down to the stream. The festival will be over within minutes. Oh, that's no good. My Barakun is just such a good listener that I couldn't help telling stories. 
I'd really rather you not mention me in a place like this. Jiro-san, could you wait out front? I want to take a few pictures. There are actually a lot of tools I'd like to bring home, but we obviously can't do that. Like, take a souvenir, like one of the handcuffs. No, don't touch anything. We are... Wait, wait, wait. When did using fingerprints become a staple of police work? Let me Google that. I don't... Did we're still in the 80s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think wait, in wait. the 80s that was when such a big thing. When yeah. did police start using fingerprints? That's actually the second thing that pops up. 1896 across India and England. Started in Argentina, apparently. So, I think it's fair to say that by the 1980s, Japanese police knows what fingerprints are. Yeah, Wait, but that also yes? means they have okay. to let them in. Yes, but they probably will. Because we had the whole tip earlier with Oishi at the police precinct, where he was telling the people who are police people who have helped set up the Watanagashi, that, that doesn't mean they're allowed in here. I'm pretty sure that the people who are tasked by the top demon people to make sure nothing bad happens to the warehouse will at least have one family member who can get their hands oh. on a fingerprint kit or maybe are themselves part of a police force. Nah. I'm sorry, you don't set up a whole demon clan village without making sure that strategically you place people in different parts of a population so that you can maximize your world controlliness. Yeah, they're definitely powerful enough, but nah. Your reason being? Because I don't think they would but, add that into the game right now. So, if if you are... The, the leader of a demon cult. You would not want like-minded individuals to join the police force so that you get access to all of their sources, within reason, of course. Yeah, but I don't think that's the case here. Besides, I was just joking. I would not take the cuff along. That's mass control 101. Yeah, exactly. Get the players on your side into key positions. You don't need to own the whole thing. You just need to pull the right strings. It's that easy. Yeah, but we okay. still wouldn't put them in the warehouse. Why not? Handful of people and only Ferruto family members. But you members. need one person. Who's... Tifa, I'm not saying they need to let the entirety of a Japanese police force into the room. I'm saying, given how the Sonozaki family is basically the Yakuza from what we've seen, I wouldn't be shocked if one of the top families is in cahoots with at least one person in the police force or yeah. maybe owns more of a police force. And they would be tasked with, hey, we're the break-in in the ritual warehouse, go send this guy who's loyal to us to make sure that they check out what happened. I don't think that's the case at all because I really don't even think they would involve the police. Whether of course they, they would involve the police. They would involve the guy who happens to work at the police because mm. he has the knowledge. I don't see it happening, per se. She's just being a contrarian on purpose, I swear. And I, I, now I need a brain no worky light. Once it happens, I had that plan all along. I never did that. <laughs> Bro, Jack, what? The audacity. <laughs> what are you talking about? What audacity? <laughs> right, it's Jack. <laughs> what? What did I do? No, I'm serious. What did I do? <laughs> if I offend people, at least I want to know why. I, I still might not apologize. <laughs> I already had step three. <laughs> I mean, I was born there. <laughs> Takano-san took a camera out of her paperback and began to snap photographs. I forgot she had a paper... paperback. You call Tifa contrarian. Were you not here to witness that she just disagreed with all of this just to disagree? She could not form a cohesive thought to back up her claim if her life depended on it. She just said, nah. Yeah, because I don't believe so. Why? Exactly. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> it's like yeah. I said, they're gonna solve this themselves. 
How tiefer? Do you think? <laughs> I, you never learn tiefer. I did the whole going back thing. Not to one of our noses. You went down the middle. At least that's what it looked like. She looked like she was having fun, like she was on a scavenger hunt. You're not going to get this chance again. Why, why is Skip suddenly lit? That was a weird... I think that's thing. Otto. Oh no, Otto is above. No, I'm Jack. That's Tomitake. No. That's Hi. not Otto. Are you sure you're not Wreck? <laughs> not today. Can't you tell that I don't even have the same hair? Hmm? Keiji Kun, are you leaving too? Wait, now when I press enter, it goes to skip. What? What the heck? Did, I, did we skip something? We did not yet. Has this happened the entire game? Am I, am I just now <laughs> noticing this? Because this is throwing me off. Sorry. I never looked at the button, but now that you mention it, it lights. Was your mouse on the skip button? No, it was actually um, on his right thigh. Like thereabouts. Can confirm. Oh, you. Oh, you don't see that on stream yet. No. I've seen enough. Shion, you're good too, right? Let's get out of here. I want some fresh air. No, it's fine. No, it doesn't happen. I guess my mouse was too close to the okay. skip button. I agree. Let's leave. Do 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 do. I did feel a bit of hesitation at leaving Takano Sun by herself in the darkness. When I thought about it, though, I realized that whatever kinds of evil spirits and ghosts lurked in the darkness, none of them could hold a candle to how scary she was. Even if a phantasm were to appear, she'd be overjoyed and flash her camera at it. It seemed like Shion shared my somewhat rude mental images. We exchanged glances and smiled painfully. We left Takano Sanbear bathed in her strobe of camera flashes and decided to go leave the ritual storehouse. Yes. Create more light flashes so that people totally cannot see what you're doing. Yeah, but if everyone is now at the stream, no one will see that. And don't forget, there's still a door in between. A hundred percent. The people tasked with the security of the warehouse were watching us the entire time. Mm. They're like ninjas. They're probably stuck in the trees. That's what I would do. But we were wrong about Tomitake being, having disappeared. True, or well, at least not yet. Everyone at the festival seemed to have gone to the stream, so their voices were very distant. The voices of the bugs, on the other hand, were clear, lending an empty feeling of isolation to the place. How was it? Interesting. Tomitake-san gave us a somewhat mischievous grin. He should have been able to tell by looking at how pale our faces were. I should have kept watch outside with you, Tomitake-san. And Miss Stan, do you know how little people get the opportunity to actually go and see them? There's no way you should miss Tifa that. Tifa is 100% the character in a horror movie that gets killed first. There is a chance, but I want to say by pure luck I survive. No. Mm -mm. You would be the sequence of a horror movie where you come up with a genius plan. Let's split up, first of all. She would be the killer 100%. All that. No, but if no, she was would, not the killer, she would be in like the like three minute continuous no cuts in between shot of her like running away. And there's like five or six like final destination moments where she's about to die. And you as the viewer like, oh my God, she's gonna. But she, she keeps not dying. And then just when the evil murder ghost is about to get to her, a bus hits her. Yeah, that, that's, that definitely seems likely, yeah. Yeah, like the entire time you'd be like, oh my god, she's gonna die from this, she's gonna die from that. And just when you think, yeah, no, she, she's gonna survive someone, that's when she gets got. That definitely seems right. Or she is the killer, yeah. And at the end she's just sitting there like... <laughs> True, I would, I'm always taking the pacifist route. Since when? Excuse me. What do you mean since You're not when? answering my question. Since, since when? always. What game have you last taken a pacifist route in? Baldur's Gate. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. 
Do you know what pacifist means? My first playthrough was very pacifist. I didn't kill anyone that didn't try to kill me first. That's not... Ah, that's that not exactly character. pacifism, but... Oh yeah, but sometimes you have no choice, don't you? And I have actually tried knocking some unconscious, but you don't get out of certain battles if you do. It's not like you have choice either. Pretty sure there's a mod for that by now, but... <clears throat> Tomitaki-san laughed so delightfully that it wiped away our dark feelings. How did you fare, shion -chan? Were you scared? I was prepared for it, so I wasn't too afraid, but... Seeing the real thing was powerful. She spoke like she wasn't scared at all. She really had been quite afraid, but seeing as how I was in a way worse state than her, I didn't have much room to talk. As Tomitaka-san grinned candidly, my mind exhausted and locked up by nervousness began to calm itself. Come on, Jack, she passed her first straight to those shitty teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh, is Takano-san an adult about his little expedition? Why did my voice go all the way up there? One sec. Ah. Was Takano-san an adult about this little expedition? You know how she seems like a child sometimes. I was worried she'd be way too excited. Both Shun and I laughed and left that as our answer. Hopefully she was only looking at things. I'm worried she'll sneak something out of here or mess with a ritual implement too much and break it or something. Right, that's quite possible. She's alone in there right now. She might pilfer something small and easily concealed, hiding it in her pocket. <laughs> yeah. What was the side look? I didn't know they wrote a character based on you, Batman. <laughs> I can see that. She unsaid what I was thinking. You were sure she didn't break anything? I could clearly hear some noises like someone jumping up and down. I was getting pretty nervous. I'm sorry. I ran out of film. Jiro-san, if you have any more, could I use some? Also, where do they think they're gonna get that film developed? Because if it's anywhere near the area of Hinamizawa, they will be found out. You really think? Yes. Tomitake, being a photographer, does not develop his own film. Potentially. There's no way he does not develop the pictures himself. I don't so know. So there's your answer. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he lives in a tiny apartment in Tokyo where he doesn't even have the space to set up his own like, photo laboratory, even if he wanted to and had the means to do it. Nah, he would do that himself. Whether he hires a place or, or rents a place. I guess Tifa knows more about that than I do. <clears throat> Takano-san suddenly appeared while we were talking about her, taking everyone by surprise. And Tomitake-san smoothly grinned and responded as if nothing had happened. He's pretty mature. <laughs> I'm all out of spare film. Sorry about that. Jeez. You won't win any Pulitzer Prizes by not stocking enough film for any occasion, you know? I suppose that's it then. Tomitake-san scratched his head apologetically. Without film, we're done here. Takano-san seemed to have given up because of that too. We checked carefully to make sure we hadn't left anything inside, then closed the door and turned to the heavy padlock we'd left beside it. Takano-san, you didn't sneak anything out, right? How rude. I'm trying to not be... Or I'm trying not to be that childish. That's not a no. I'm just saying. Kerklak. Tomitake set the padlock back to where it was before. From a cursory glance, it didn't look like thieves had snuck in at all. From a non-cursory glance? I'm just saying, especially with the comments about it reeking of mold and dust, maybe you don't even need to be like a top-class detective. You can just see the footprints imprinted on the dust in there. That or if any of them wore deodorants, perfume. 
if they come back and smell that, you know someone was in there. You know, sometimes the smell lingers. Why do you look at me like that? Never once have I seen a thriller or CSI-like show where the police investigators went to the site of a murder and went like, yes, it was Shion Sonazaki. I can smell it. In a place like this, if they would that wear... Hurt my nose how often have you walked past someone that sprayed some sort of body axe and it lingers? Body axe? Yeah, what's that stuff called? Body spray. Nice attempt to get sponsored. No, oh, how often? Never. Yes. I've heard you say several times, like, oh, I don't know what this person wore, but I can still smell it. When walking like past us, for example. Tifa has a police dog, apparently. So I'm just saying, that is a thing. They might not she's have gonna, spray deodorant. She's gonna ask the people to please close the door because the air movement is making it hard for her to pick up the scent. <laughs> Maybe not spray deodorant, but like perfume or anything. I'm just saying it's a possibility. Is spray deodorant really that recent of an I'm gonna have a look when that got invented. I didn't know that. When did... Good old body axe as opposed to a hand axe. Yeah, like... We all understand what she meant, but what she said was weird. The first spray deodorant came out in 1941. Mm -hmm. So they did actually... And was... The first aerosol deodorant was launched in 1965. The question is where and what the adoption was in Japan. In 20 years, I want to say that came out already. A good thing it was a body axe. <laughs> no, but I'm saying certain smells no. linger. No. Yes. No. Don't even pretend like you've never smelled lingering perfume now. Okay. You... But it, it doesn't matter. No, it, just it, it does it, matter. Now you've I'm triggered me. I'm not saying me. they're no, going to no, no. get found out because of this. I'm just saying it's something Tifa, that could you have give awoken the beast. I need to debate you. <laughs> so. Tifa doesn't believe that potentially... Yeah, strap in for this. She doesn't believe that potentially a member of the people loyal to the Hinamizawan clans that orchestrate all of this could feasibly be a member of the police, therefore having access to police resources. But Tifa believes that there is at least one person among their ranks that will enter the shrine and then go there is some mistakes in what you said because I do believe they have enough influence to have people in the police corps. I mean, they own... Core, not corps. They own most of the city. Of course they do. What I do not believe is that they would get them and investigate inside this warehouse. Because I'm quite sure the people who work in the police force are not part of people that would enter here. And even if someone broke in or there's a dead body in there, they would not go to them to investigate what happened in there. Write this down. Tifa, what Tifa is thinking now, to quote you from earlier. So what's gonna happen at some point in the future is Oishi-san is going to come to this particular warehouse uh, it will be locked and then he's gonna press his nose against the the door frame like this and go like yeah okay she was here I can I can smell it I'm saying if they if they wore strong perfume so they come back and you smell that you know someone was there we'll still be on the scene when they go on vacation possibly a with high the hot takes of uh, Tifa Kuhn over here. Very mm. high chance. Okay, let's get over to the streamer's house. If we don't at least set some cotton afloat, there won't be any point in coming to the festival. Tomitaki-san spoke brightly, urging us all on. Setting cotton afloat down the stream? I shake my head a few times, driving away my dismal thoughts as to the double meaning. Takano-san, looking a little let down, kept turning back to glance at the ritual storehouse. It does, that is the more fun part. Let's just leave it at that, alright? You saw enough to sate your curiosity, didn't you? <laughs> Not at all. 
Everything I found only renewed my interest. All those stories and legends suddenly hold water. After today, I'm going to have to change the way I look at all this. Wow, she's truly indomitable. Her curiosity really is something else. Still interested in all of this through and through. Well, isn't it nice that you find some found some kind of proof? No. It would kind of suck if you went in there and there was like nothing. Just I a stash of futons for the next 10 years. I would have much preferred that. Because that means all of the stuff that allegedly happens here probably doesn't. You know my favorite demons and monsters in real life? Are the ones that don't actually exist. In real life, yeah, I agree, I agree. We descended with... <clears throat> I was reading Throne for some reason. It's a nice shop, by the way. We descended the stone stairs and all the people crowding the stream came into view. Near the bottom of the stairs we could clearly see people receiving cotton that had been cut out for them and wishing upon the cotton and setting it afloat down the stream. The festival was already over. Damn. I missed my chance to photograph the best part of the Watanagashi. Oh, but it's not too late. I'm going to go and set some afloat. Perhaps you could take pictures of me? Takano, with an impish expression, brought her head to Tomitaki-san's shoulder. Despite his age, she looked embarrassed. I felt an honest respect for Tomitaki-san, man to man, for dating such a handful of a woman. <laughs> Goodbye then. My baraku? Shionchan? We're going down to the stream. Would you like to come with us? No, no. I couldn't get in your way. Please, take your time. Shion waved her hand to them with an expression just as impish as Takano's sounds. Is this the time for Hanky Panky? <laughs> Tomitake-san, on his part, seemed to want us to come, but whatever. Shion gave a big stretch and sat down on the stone steps. <laughs> I'm pretty worn out. The same here. I'm exhausted too. Keishan, this is your first Watanagashi, isn't it? <laughs> More like his last. We also missed half of it. Mm -hmm. You go on, don't mind me. I'm tired, so I'd like to stay away from the crowd. Yeah, if we were to go now, we'd barely slip into the end of a cotton drifting ceremony. My sister and your other friends might be looking for you too. Go on. Oh, yeah, right. They've been by themselves ever since we got separated. I'd feel bad if they were looking for me. Then she and suddenly got a playful look on her face, then put her index finger to her lips as if telling me to keep this a secret. Well, speaking of secret, shall I write it down as a theory that the canned human flesh is gonna come back in chapter 3? <sighs> I don't feel that's necessary, but if you do, please go ahead. As a reminder, no, but fine, we can, I, I can do without. I will still remember this. My sister is the type that gets really jealous. If she knew I was hawking you this whole time, she'd never let me hear the end of it. So keep tonight a secret, okay? Keep tonight a secret? Don't say things that are so embarrassing. I know something better. How about we pretend this never happened? Hmm? That's like better than keeping it a secret. Don't worry, by the next time loop he'll have forgotten all about it anyway. <laughs> Not only because of that either. Considering what we were doing tonight, we really need to keep it a secret. Oh, Hishirasama's curse might happen tonight and we four would be the prime candidates. The loosening threads of tensions became taut again. Shion, however, burst out laughing. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to get out of here before I run into my sister. I really am tired, so I don't have the endurance to put up with her anyway. I can't tell if you get along with her or not. We get along. Though, as she said that, her vague expression explained that there are a lot of oddities in the relationship between twins. I'm an only child, so I don't really get it. Make sure you get along with her, okay? Alright. Thank you kindly for your meddling. Okay, I'm gonna go. 
You should hurry up if you want to make it, Keisha. But then I guess she really is about to end. She stood up and brushed the dust off her backside. After watching her do so, I returned my eyes to the final ceremony of the Watanagashi festival below me. Seriously, though, what was that sound anyway? It was kind of unpleasant and creepy. Huh? What sound? The sound? You know, the banging noise? There was no banging noise, it sounded like chimes in the wind. It was really loud, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It was audible, but not like super loud. But chapter okay. 3 when we meet Mion's next sister. Pleon. <laughs> Something like that. How many chapters do we have again? Eight? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Shion. I thought it was fucked up already. <laughs> oh, Freon, because she's the third. See what you did there, Dark Lord. Like Freon, Freon, Pleon. Foron. Nah, it's matter. like the one brother. Uh, I was giving her a blank expression, so Shion stared hard at me. I stared hard at her, too. Sorry, Shion. Could you give me the short version? What was making noise? Wait, Keichan? It didn't bother you? When all was said and done, it was like we were speaking two different languages. Shion, explain it to me without jokes from the beginning, will you? What's this about a noise? Keichan, you quit joking around too. Really? Honestly, it didn't bother you? Neither of us was giving any ground, and both of us were staring at the other in disbelief. We were answering questions with more questions with no sign of an actual conversation inside. Baffled, I held in the urge to shout at her and ask politely one more time. This feels like so many conversations between us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask one more time, okay? I'll ask the questions. Shion nodded silently. Okay, here goes. You said there was a sound. What are you talking about? The banging sound. It was like a kid that was jumping up and down on floorboards somewhere far away. It really didn't bother you. I mean, Tomitake said something about a sound as well, but we didn't hear anything. The only sound we heard was the weird chime sound. Which I didn't hear because my ear thing fell out. Yeah, because you know that's smart. <laughs> there was nothing to be bothered by. When did you hear this? I never heard anything. <laughs> what? It sounded like that. <laughs> that's the weird sound. <laughs> Wait, Keichan? Are you... Are you serious? She and as if she didn't understand my plain and simple answer pressed me further. Her expression serious. I have no clue what she's talking about, but if it has she on acting so like this, whatever it was, it gave me the creeps and sent a chill down my spine. It was while we were looking around the inside of the ritual storehouse with Takano-san. About the time she started her stories, I think it was. Little by little, louder and louder, off and on. She heard a banging sound like a child jumping on distant floorboards? That can't be true. Don't start trying to scare me after all that. I, I didn't hear anything at all. In fact, it was so utterly silent and aware that my own heartbeat was almost deafening. Please don't try to scare me either, Keijo. It was like something was making noise in time with Takano's scary stories and I was totally creeped out the whole time. Chill rose from my spine to the back of my head. My blood turned cold as it crawled up my body. When it reached my head, my mind froze over. You and Takano-san weren't paying any attention to it at all, so I pretended not to hear it either, but... You heard it, right? It happened a bunch of times and it was really loud. Shion's eyes were begging me to tell her I heard it. I had no doubt, however, that my own eyes suggested something entirely different, a you've got to be kidding look. 
In that storehouse, we were surrounded by brutal ritual tools that looked like we were from another planet, listening to terrifying old stories. The whole time, Shion had been hearing a sound that we couldn't hear by herself. Should that make Shion, who heard it, tremble, or should it make me, who didn't hear it, tremble? I didn't know the answer to that at the time. For now, Shion seemed to have made the decision before I did. <laughs> What are you laughing about? I really got you, Kajan. I was fibbing the whole time. And this is why you will get murderized by Oyashirozama because you pull shit like this. What? She laughed, saying how easily scared I was, and clapped me on the back. <laughs> Classic <laughs> Tifa. Yeah, 100%. I don't think I would have been able to pull it off for so long. So I want to say no. She would have tried. Classic Tifa. She, she would have tried. Yeah. I would have laughed the moment I started it. Her smell seemed somehow artificial and actually made me feel worse. Then, after leaving me with two or three generic diplomatic goodbye phrases, she left almost like she was running away. Besides, it could also be that She's she did it. hear it, yeah. and now it's like, oh, ha ha ha, tricked you. Mm -hmm. You know what that sound was? The sound of her death. Technically, yes. It was Oyashiro-sama descending from the heavens, making his way uh, to the room. That could be. It was the sound of her impending doom. All I could do was look after her, my mouth agape. At the end of the day, I didn't have a clue what was going on. Shion laughed it off and said she had been lying, but she couldn't possibly have been lying. Of course not. And now that I think back, Tomitake-san said the same thing, didn't he? I could clearly hear some noises like someone jumping up and down. I was getting pretty nervous. Tomitake-san, the most neutral party present at the time, had said he'd heard something. Then that noise, it was real. The, the banging sounds. It sounds as though a child was jumping up and down on some kind of floorboards far away. We are sure summer's curse, which happens every year, might happen again tonight. The most plausible victim candidates were Takano-san, Tomitake-san, Shion and me. The bustling of the people surrounded <clears throat> the bustling of the people sounded further away than I would have liked, and the sounds of the insects sounded too close for comfort. I'm near so much human warmth, and yet I can't ever go back there again. That was the ominous idea that spouted in my mind. Then all of a sudden I was pounced on from behind, causing my heart to lurch. There's me on. Oh Rika. Keiji, we found you! The worst spot to be found in because it directly implicates that you were one of the people in that thing. Why? They're not near the warehouse. We're next to the stream. Are you sure? Because it's still the same background. That's not the warehouse you're seeing. It was Rika, John. When I turned around, Mion and Reyna were there too. We finally found you. Now we just need to find Satako. Everyone got split up this year. We should make sure we have somewhere to meet up afterwards next year. Well, Satoko no. is the victim. What? Nah. If they're changing it, Satoko is dead. Oh, she was like the little kid jumping up and down the floorboards? Oh, well, that, that I don't know. But I, I mean, find that it would weird. Fit the description. I find it weird that Santa goes missing. And technically, we can still see the others in our side, I guess, because they're doing the whole "Ooh, bye, futon." Okay, so this time it's gonna be Satoko and Shion, man. Oh, I didn't even consider the second person. That, if they're going to change it, I would think so. Yeah. Let's find out. You're right. It's a festival, so we should all be together. I listened to Mion's happy declaration with a little bit of guilt. Keiji, did you root for me while I was dancing? Uh, yeah, I saw it all. 
You did a great job all the way through. No mistakes even. Shouldn't have said that though. What if she did trip? Yeah, that's right, Rika Chan. That didn't count as a mistake. I tensed up as I realized I'd made a mistake of my own. Mm-hmm. Mion slapped a hand onto my shoulder a little roughly. A gross sweat broke out of my whole body. Did you do it too, Kei-chan? Did you get some cotton and send it down the stream? You haven't yet, right? Is what I could feel her saying. Without the courage to tell any more lies, I lifelessly shook my head. Huh? You haven't, kei You should go now or it will be over. It will be over. S sorry. This is my first water nagashi, so... I don't really understand the rules and stuff. <laughs> That's right. I'm sorry. Mion took my hand and we started walking down the stone steps. Hey, Keicha? What? What was your favorite part of Rika's performance? In before performance? jump scares. Oh my god. Oh. I thought this was another moment where they're trying mm -hmm. to like... I was expecting the... Thing. I, I don't think that's gonna happen in this chapter. It still might. It's too late for that, no? No, it's never too late to scare the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Did you see Xion? Oh. My heart skipped another beat. Sorry? Maybe Mion could sense my surprise through my hand. No, oh, well, I sort of think I saw her. You two look so alike though, so it, it might have been you. <laughs> yeah, don't you remember this conversation we had during yeah. Rika's performance? Mm -hmm. While I was there next to you, clearly. Well, she... Eating takoyaki without octopus balls in it. You do always say you're an old man. Do mm -hmm. you have dementia? <laughs> I guess. You wouldn't have gotten that wrong. We're wearing different clothes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh huh. Oh, that's right. Mion's momentary silence was like a death grip upon me. Don't act suspicious. Don't act suspicious. I just can't do anything about that, Xion. Well, it's her we're talking about, so we can just leave her be. Mian's expression returned to a former usual smile and we continued down the stone steps, her firmly pulling my hand along. Yes? This is also kind of weird, isn't it? It's always been weird when Mion and Xion interacted or appeared shortly after another. Aren't we going to search for Satoko? No. Because she dead. Or not, depending on what we're going to see in the tip in a moment. Probably not, I guess. From the scrapbook 4. Watanagashi. The Rite of Watanagashi is performed during a village festival every June, even now, but reading back to its origins turns up a seriously sanguine ceremony. Originally, Watanagashi could happen at certain, would happen at certain intervals, and after receiving Oyashiro sama's trust, they chose a sacrifice. Then the entire village would kidnap the demon away, the person, and ceremonially dissect and devour them in a feast. The rules that determine the intervals are shrouded in mystery. This is because the ceremonies occurred extremely irregularly. There's a theory that it was determined based on astrological fortune telling, but it isn't too convincing. The residents of ancient Onigafuchi village firmly believe that they were half man, half demon transcendents, and that they were more valuable than humans were, and they forced people within and without to accept that. Perhaps the act of kidnapping and eating people was done to prove that they were higher up on the food chain. This is just a hypothesis, but maybe the right of Watanagashi was a political event for the purpose of being an outlet for, or outright diverting the attention of, the villagers of the isolated Onigafuchi village, in case any of their complaints or dissatisfaction, <clears throat> in case any of their complaints or dissatisfactions grew serious. If that was the main reason these ceremonies were held, then it's easy to explain how erratic they were. 
Okay, so it wasn't a once a year thing. So basically to control the populace. Hmm. Not the amount of people, but to keep them like nice and docile. As much as you can, that you can do that with cannibalism. Well, the more demons or half demons you have, the more often it would happen that people get taken over by the blood. Allegedly. Oh, and the alleged importance of the implements. I can't find anything that gives a concrete description on what the ritual implements were like. They were, however, real, and there definitely existed a multitude of different kinds. One source states that the implements used in the Watanagashi write alone number 200. The obvious question, then, is why they required such a myriad of them. The right of Watanagashi was to kidnap people through the demoning away, dissect them, and eat them. I believe the tools were for dissection and restraining, but 200 of them is far too many. Generally, tools evolve in such a way as to reach a solution for a certain problem. Once you've reached the ultimate goal, that has attained a certain level of efficiency, the tool's evolution normally stops there. Regardless, why would they have created so many different kinds? One of the cultural elements responsible for diversification over time is that of entertainment. Tools used for entertainment would evolve over time and branch out. Unlike normal tools, reaching the ultimate goal would be more of a dead end and in searching for the next goal, they would split into many different subtypes. So then, perhaps it's not a stretch to suggest that these 200 plus implements had some entertainment value. This is just a hypothesis, of course, but maybe the human dissection process was viewed as a type of entertainment. The three families of old would develop one new implement, a dissection tool, after another. And each was very novel and attracted spectators to keep them from growing bored. It's not unimaginable. All of them have to be enshrined within that storehouse. There isn't much longer until the night of Water Nagashi. Though its original intent has been lost, I will reveal the secrets that the traditional ceremonial night with I will reveal the secrets of the traditional ceremonial night within the ritual storehouse. I can't restrain my excitement. Watanagashi cannot come soon enough. With 200 of them, I would guess either there were that many because the population of the demons has increased and everybody wanted to get a go at it, or just for entertainment purposes. Mm. Could be both. After the festival. Oh, maybe now we hear, uh, hear who the victim is. Late night, that <clears throat> late that night, tensions in the police station were strained. In the silence, many of the staff members' eyes shifted back and forth between the clock and the telephones, counting the seconds in that stifled atmosphere. Kumagaya Kun burst in with a young guy trailing behind him. Oishi oh, san, I've got the autopsy results. The court physician just got here. Okay, who is it gonna be? Even though the whole Satako missing thing was suspicious, it's probably the same people. I'm ready to go, sir. I'll head straight for the burned body's location. The burned body? Okay. New type of death. I think it's Shion and Satako. It could be either. Because... I don't think it's Tomitake and Takano, despite them having a good reason to become victims. Satak, from the description of the sounds that uh, they heard somehow, um, Satako makes the most sense, especially with her missing at the end of the last chapter. And if Shion is gone now, that would explain... Uh, that wouldn't explain anything. <laughs> it depends on if we're gonna stick to the same deaths and stuff in every chapter, I guess. <clears throat> Kumachan, things have gotten a bit complicated. They appear to be having a very difficult time determining who the victim is. Could they have been dismembered? Nope. Cooked to a nice light brown. He spoke in sport of tones, but the meaning behind his words was heavy. The staff gave a collective sigh. 
all the way, head to toe? What an odd question to reply to someone has been cooked. Cooked brown. No, um, the feet were actually uh, blue in the style of cooking. Um, the head was medium well done. <laughs> Completely black and it seems. Probably smells terrible too. What a shame it is to be Gifu-san. Cooked with no possessions. Then discarded outside the prefecture. At worst it would have taken a week for the body to be identified. The fact that they'd sniffed it out tonight was huge. Komiyama-kun and a few others are performing a thorough night raid on the dentist in Okinomiya. All we can do is hope a tooth matches some medical records. I'm hearing Gordon Ramsay, it's black. I'm hearing him, it's fucking raw. But that would be counterproductive to what we did. <clears throat> Sorry. Did someone go buy me two or so boxes of strong cigarettes? The young guy answered an information and darted out into the hallway. We did an excellent job finding it this year. It could be that the people who disappeared in past years were scattered outside the prefecture like this too. And why not bury them or sink them into the Sea of Japan or Lake Biwa or somewhere like that? Why though? Hasn't the pattern so far been one person dies and another disappears? Kumachan, the corpse was inside an oil drum, unrestrained and cooked. They probably burned them after strangling them. They knew it would be found. So what you mean is, from the beginning they didn't want a person to disappear this year? Not so much that, <clears throat> not so much that as they just aren't related. The person didn't disappear. In fact, whoever did it seems to have wanted to make a show of it. Am I a little bit confused? There's always one person who dies and one who disappears. Yes. But now they act like the one they found is the one who disappeared, so, which means there has to be a second body already. <clears throat> which is funny because usually you can't tell that a person has disappeared until after some time has elapsed because you know somebody just might have taken longer to get home. Yeah, but then you would assume that this is the death of the year. Yes. But now they're talking like this should be the disappearance. I, I'm at the point where I stopped asking questions about anything. Why? What? I don't know, that sounded so hurt. Because for, <laughs> because for nine streams I've been wrecking my brain, yelling, arguing back and forth about how and the why and the whens. There, there is no point right now. The police is completely untrustable. I don't know if his, Oishi, if his version of Oishi-san is telling the truth. I don't know if he believes his colleagues can be trusted. Maybe he's just saying things to mislead them because he's the only one that actually cares as per chapter one. Maybe he isn't. Maybe this one also doesn't really care and the only beef he has is with Shion and the Sonazaki family. Maybe he's acting like this on purpose to throw the others off his scent that he actually is the only one actually investigating these cases but he wants them to think that he doesn't. My brain is full of fuck. <laughs> it's funny, I can't read two lines without having to breathe, but I can just spew all of a stream of consciousness while breathing through my hair, apparently. Missing people tend to not be found. That's make, that makes them missing. 10 out of 10 rand. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, I'm yeah, natural. I agree. But I just find it a bit weird how they now talk about how this person should be missing. Yeah, implying that maybe they already found another body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so then, maybe tonight there's three victims. And then it is, yeah, that's the, that seems like a very important thing. Zegt dat dan? For people that don't speak Dutch, say that then. <laughs> it's a common thing to say in Tifa's family. I was gonna say no, but I now hear yeah. everyone in my yeah. family say, Zeg dat dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why it's one of the first phrases I picked up on. No, you're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Welcome to Dutch with Jack. I understood that. See? That's the beauty of Dutch. If you speak German, preferably German and English, it's always somewhere in between there. Do you think this could be a warning? Uh, a warning? Maybe. Oh. Depends on who it is that they grilled. 
That is true. I want to. We need because more if we grill taka no sun, yes, it could be a warning. Don't mess with us. Don't look into this. Don't investigate. Don't ask questions. If it's Xion, I don't think it would be a warning because Xion, I would imagine, is too high ranking of a member of a Hinamizawa society. Uh, with Satoko, I have no idea. Also, it would be kind of weird if Xion ends up dead. She's too much of a prominent member of the family. But Which again, is why it would be a Game of Thronesian moment. Oh my god, we just... Like, the story has been pushing Xion down our throat from nearly the beginning. It set her up in the beginning, and then every every big scene was about Xion, caused by Xion, question Xion. It's always been Xion, Xion, Xion. True. So killing her off now would be like, oh my god, they didn't. <sighs> True. I'm dead inside when it comes to twists like this, because I have watched all of Game of Thrones by then. You mean, it could be a warning? I think you need to click into it again. Oh yeah, that was it. He folded his arms and then heaved a long and heavy sigh. <sighs> that might have been the best case that happened in town. Oh, that might have been the case had it happened in town. If they'd messed up, taking the victim far away and burning them alive wouldn't have been noticed. If they meant it as a warning, they should have done it closer to Hinamizawa. They wanted to emphasize the fact that they killed the victim, but instead of doing it somewhere for a dramatic effect, they did it outside the prefecture. Did they want to emphasize it or hide it? Boy, do I wonder what Oyashiro Sama is up to this year. Phone call of death. A telephone ring cut through the heavy silence. A staff member nearby snatched up the receiver. Where's the phone? In your hand, detective. Oh, son It's Komiyama. They have it. The dental clinic in Okinomiya fixed a wisdom tooth three years ago. It's not Satoko. Statistically, it's highly unlikely that a child of, she, yeah. she would have been like five or so back then, had wisdom tooth stuff done. Even had wisdom tooth. I mean, that can happen really early, but five is highly unlikely, I want to say. Mine didn't come true until end teenager, teenage years. What about the records? Complete with x-rays. Well, I feel bad for waking up a dentist before dawn. Kumachan, get out there as soon as you get the records from Kumiyama-kun. Will do. Oh, it's the chief. Thank you for coming out at this hour. Are these all different people? Well, this is the chief now. Oishi-san, my apologies for my lateness. What's the situation? Now they all have the same voice. <laughs> it's fine. All police people are the same anyway. Yeah, exactly. I don't actually. Hmm, well, it's just getting good, you see. We're all getting fired up. Whoa! What the fuck? Hey, and they don't have character art, so... They clearly, they don't, clearly they don't, they matter, don't matter, matter They don't get their own <sighs> voice. ACAB. All cops are blank. It's the Hinamizawa version. Most of Fishi's guys are the same kind of guy, except for Kuma guy. Yeah, he Be because did get he's a, a name. Because he's a Kuma? Kuma guy? I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> ACAO. All cops are Oishi. <laughs> all that. All that. Save. I want to know who died. I know this would be the perfect moment to end it, but I need to know who died. I can't sleep if I don't find out. Yeah, we can still go on for a little bit. Especially since almost none of them have sprites. Exactly. <laughs> AC, AC. All cops, air conditioning. <laughs> I guess. They, they deserve it. I, mean, I let out a great big yawn. Why is the text not advancing? Thank you. I'm really good at that, aren't I? It was like morning had arrived just as I got to sleep. As mom set up breakfast, she gave me a pained smile. What's the matter, Keiji? What time did you go to sleep last night? Well, I wanted to go to sleep at midnight, but I had some trouble with that. 
You were probably all worked up from the festival. N no, that's not it. Crunch. Crunch. I crunched down hard on the pickled radish to hide my embarrassment. Ah yes, the good old trope of embarrassment hiding radishes. After all that had happened yesterday and our discussion about the sound she unheard, that banging noise like a child far away jumping up and down on a wooden floor, the story wouldn't get out of my head so I had trouble sleeping. It was a long night and I kept jumping at the slight sounds of faraway tree branches which should have been either unhearable or too insignificant to notice. When I woke up to the morning sunlight and birds chirping, it made me feel pretty ashamed about it, but I felt far from refreshed this morning. Okay, Chikun, good morning. Huh? Okay, Chikun, your eyes are all red. Why is that? Why? Oh, hey, good morning. I didn't get much sleep last night. So I'm sleep deprived today. <sighs> I was faking it. The festival yesterday was a lot of fun. Prina's excitement took a long time to go to sleep. So I took a long time to go to So I took a long time to go to sleep too. To sleep. This wait, is a, is wait, this can, a can, weird Can line? you run the sentence again? What did I just listen to? Reina's excitement took a long time to go to sleep, so I took a long time to go to sleep too. To sleep. Oh, she was talking in the third person again. Okay. It was an odd line. Yeah. I mean, she's an odd character. Mm. <laughs> Makes sense. Her usual speech mannerism. Yeah, but somehow that one completely threw me off. Same. In Reina's case, her excitement seemed to still be wide awake. They should have this kind of festival more often. So we can have lots of fun together again. Mm, uh, yeah. I mean, talking about the festival yesterday made me remember everything I had nearly forgotten from last night. How would you nearly forget that? Because I'm tired. There's no nearly forgetting. I'm tired. That. Stop yawning at me. Are you cagey? <sighs> Joke's on you. I'm always tired. That's actually hurtful. Why? Because you're saying nothing in your life with me excites you to the point past tiredness. It does, but I can't help be tired anyway. Yes, you can. Just get good at sleeping. <laughs> the inside of a ritual storehouse had been so utterly different from the relaxed, bright, everyday life of Hinamizawa. All those stories that Takano-san told me too. The mysterious incidents that occurred on the day of the Watanagashi festival every year? The strange incidents where one person would die and one would disappear? The old stories of Hinamizawa flickering like a candle behind them? The numerous and horrifying traditions of Onigafuchi village? The villages with demon blood in them? The terrible cannibalistic feasts? The poor sacrifices kidnapped from human villages victims of the Onikakushi? To quell the rage of Oyashira Sama, the ritual involving living sacrifices. There were also many, many others. There were so many stories that just remembering them put me in a foul mood. Most of them weren't fiction either, they were true. I didn't need to fear them just because they were real though. Since it all happened so long ago. Such a very long time ago. Yeah, that makes it better. If you loved me, you would be hyperactive 24-7. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I know, right? Where's Pincha? She's late. Okay, now without Reyna having been dosed with LSD, please. Where's Pincha? She's late. Uh-huh. Before I realized that we had arrived at the place where we'd usually meet up with Mion. Probably because I was so lost in thought. We agreed that if she isn't here by now, we can just go on ahead, right? Now Mion is missing, should we? Mion being late wasn't too rare an occurrence, but today she was unusually late. A few of ominous tales from the night before came back to life in my mind again. Who would die this year and who would disappear? Uh, it couldn't have been Mion. What should we do, Keiichi-kun? If we don't get going, we'll be late. 
She'll be here. She didn't call to tell us that she'd be staying home today, right? Let's just wait five more minutes, okay? You good, bro? <laughs> She's got that... Uh, that look in her eyes that tells me the moment she's gonna see a flat surface, she's gonna fall asleep. That's why I really need you to not look down so that you don't see the desk in front of you. Yeah, now chin down. No. You pulled it down. You breathed on my... on the edge of my hand so much it got moist. No, that was not. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, don't ask I was me. trying to keep her from not seeing a flat surface so that she doesn't fall asleep and then move her head forward so that she can keep reading her lines. Clearly I failed. I don't know why I was doing it. It just made sense to me. As if you've never been there where you did that to a person you were trying to not have fall asleep. Just me? No. It's, it's warm. It, it really is warm. That must, that must be it. Arena looked at her watch and seemed a little worried, but then she nodded with a satisfied smile. Hmm. If we had to wait five more minutes, we'd have to run as fast as we could to school or we'd be late. As soon as I thought that, we spotted Mion running towards us out of breath. Yeah. Wait, Reyna isn't wearing a watch? Now that you mention oh, that, Lord, actually. Why? Why did you do that? That didn't even click. Where is the watch? It must be in the flesh knob. <laughs> the what? The... <laughs> it's inside the flesh mittens. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, on her back, which you can't see because of the Higurashi lean. Dum, dum, dum. You're late. <gasps> Are you trying to press or...? Is that actually Mio? I would think so, yeah. How would she all know to meet up with us here? Because so far they knew everything from each other. <sighs> you waited? You should have just gone on ahead. Mian was breathing heavily and her face was all red. The house was right down this road, wasn't it? It wasn't far enough away for her to end up like this, was it? Uh, trust me, at this point I would be absolutely dead probably from that distance. Mijan, are you not feeling well? Huh? Now that she mentioned it, Rina pushed Mian's bangs away and put her hand on her forehead. Reina, your hand is pretty cold. Yeah, now without falling asleep, please. Reina reaches into her right sock and pulls out a pocket watch. <laughs> Potentially. Your hand is pretty cold. Hey, John, you're a little bit warm. Yes, yeah, she yeah, was she just, just running, running full throttle. Of course she'd be warm, even if it was just a short sprint. Do Japanese people not get warm when they run? It's no big deal. Give it half a day and I'll be fit as a fiddle. Are you really okay? You don't have to push yourself, you know. What's this? Keichan, are you worried about me? <laughs> That's so nice of you. That answer wasn't like me at all. This is Shion! I'm not this sure is 100 percent Shion. I'm That's sure why she was running well. like this. That's why she shouldn't be tired or beat or whatever from just running that short stretch until here. This is Shion. I don't know if they're setting us up or not. She must have had it pretty bad. I just think you shouldn't push yourself so hard. We can tell the teacher you had to take the day off. I'm fine, I'm fine. I took some medicine. I think it's already working. Do you see how she's just going along with her lies? This is 100% Shion. She even looks like her. I'm not convinced yet. Mion forced an energetic expression onto her face and flexed her biceps at us. Are you actually flexing? 
I wouldn't want to like knock you out of the room by flexing. Sorry, guns are not allowed on Twitch, so she wasn't actually flexing. Danger hazard. Okay, then let's go. Don't overdo it. But of course, where's the time? What? We need to run or we won't make it. <laughs> this morning sure is thrilling. Maybe it's just what I need to shake off this slowness. You just said you took medicine. Clearly visit... <laughs> do they make medicine against slowness? Because where do I order some for Tifa? Yeah, I said what I said. Wow. Am I wrong? <laughs> Let's run. Yeah. Totally. It's called speed. <laughs> do you know how often I am on speed? Hey, wait. You're sick. Don't go overboard. Mion began to run vigorously anyway. Michan is older than us, right? She knows her own body better than anyone. I decided to leave it at that and assume she was fine. Great, then we should get going too. We began to run after Mion. The school looked the same as always. The hours passed listlessly and my lack of sleep took its toll. I was a sport where people competed by sleeping. I'd be world champion right now. And Tifa. The trick to overcoming this sort of dangerous situation was to hold your pencil upside down. Why you ask? So you don't draw strange patterns all over your notes while half asleep. Then you start writing them on your face. What? If you hold your pen upside down. Yes. So that you don't, if when you fall asleep, you don't start writing over your notes. Yes. If you like start leaning down, you'll start writing on your face. I think you would sooner have a problem with stabbing yourself in the face. The head is quite heavy. If you, if you sit there like this and you suddenly fall asleep and you just go, that's gonna hurt. It could just be like. Yeah, of course. Tifa, in her strikes. infinite sleep wisdom, makes her arm go sideways when she can't control it. <laughs> it's the force from the head that pushes it sideways. If you could hold Same. your pen upside down, it would be a nap. <laughs> and instantly I'm thinking of a hyperdimension nap junior game. Nap nap. When is nap nap? If you were holding your pencil upside down, that would happen, wouldn't it? Wouldn't. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Something that felt something that felt like an eraser hit me in the head six times. Ow, ow! What was that for, Satoko? Okay, okay. not Satoko. I, I haven't done a single thing. Who else would play a prank on me like this? Oh, it was chalk, not an eraser. Eh? That's even worse. That's the teacher being pissed. Yeah. Behind me, like a female outlaw might hold razors, was the teacher's shadow holding three pieces of chalk in each hand. Rumble, rumble, rumble. My barracoon. Go and wash your face. Uh, right. Gladly. That alone was enough to wake me up, but I flew out into the hallways if shoved out by the pressure exuded by the teacher's sheer power. If I was going to wash my face anyway, then I'd rather use the things out front rather than the ones in the dark restroom. Do they not have lights in the bathroom? I'm thinking that I left the hallway and went to the entrance. Let's call it a night No, here. But is there gonna be Oishi? The sunlight was strong. So strong you wouldn't think it was June. I turned the faucet and with a lifeless, bubbling noise, lukewarm water came pouring out. If I let it run for a few moments, would it get cold? I looked at it absentmindedly for a little while. I knew you'd choose these things, Kei-chan. The ones out front just feel better, don't they? Why is Mion out here when we are in class? Hmm. Mion? Oh, no cutting class, no? I stuck my hands into the water to find it had gotten so cold that it seemed strange it had ever been warm. I scooped it up and splashed it against my face. 
Once I was done, I moved out of the way and Mion did the same. Mion, how is your cold doing? You're sleepy because of a medicine, not from lack of sleep, right? Hmm. <laughs> Actually, this is a secret, but after the festival yesterday, I got wrapped up in the party my relatives were having. And well, I had a bit. A bit? She made a gesture like she was tilting a cup into her mouth. Which means you didn't have a cold or anything. Uh, are you hungover? How old are you? <laughs> Give me a break. I really don't feel well, you know. I suppose she'd be feeling lousy either way. Still, you treat colds and hangovers in completely different ways. I was worried over nothing. Man, I guess that's just like you, Mio. Mion scratched her head a little embarrassed. She didn't seem to be feeling well, but now that I knew it was a hangover, I didn't need to worry too much. She needs a dinner. <laughs> yes, ah, oh, a kebab would be so good, Anna. It would be to go away. <clears throat> it would go away with time, after all. Oh, but my head really is pounding, so... The teacher told me I should go home early. Ah, you cheater! So are you going home now, Mion? Now that I looked again, Neon had her back with her. She must have been on her way home. Yeah, yep. I feel bad about it, though. I'll get some rest at home like a good girl. Sorry I can't make it to the club. Would you take over as leader for today, Kajun? This is not how Mion usually speaks. This is Xion. It's your best friend. No, it's Xion. I'm this is Xion. not sure yet. I don't know if that will happen. We have an unspoken rule where we don't do the club unless everyone is there, don't we? We never did it when you had to go to your part-time job, did we? Mion laughed with Riley, saying we didn't need to worry about her. No matter how much fun we have, though, I think that feeling guilty about friends who can't share and it is a sign of a really fantastic friendship. In that sense, the club Mion has created is a wonderful thing. As I thought about it, the moisture on my washed face dried up. I suppose we were talking too much? If I didn't get back to the classroom soon, I could get in trouble. Okay, later. I'm going back. Be careful on your way home. Don't wobble into a sewer or a brook, got it? I left it at that, turned around and started heading back to the classroom. Oh, one more thing, Kei-chan. Mion stopped me and I turned my head to listen. What's up? This may sound weird, but don't think too hard about it. Well, that depends on what it is. The canned human flesh? Last night, near the end of the festival, did you see Tomitake-san or Takano-san anywhere? Okay, so we stick to the same deaths. I suddenly tensed up. You know, Tomitake-san and Takano-san, right? You remember, Keichan, when the four of you were what talking during the setup the day before? If I could, I wanted to forget about sneaking into the storehouse that night as soon as possible. So hearing the names of the people I was with at the time really got to me. Besides that, though, why was Mion asking me a question like that? I ended up staring at her, unable to answer immediately. Was she asking to see if I had seen them or not, or was she asking the question knowing that I had? I, I couldn't tell. Well, maybe? I might have seen them around. I don't know. My vague response was clearly not to me on the liking. What answer was she expecting from me? There was no way for me to know. She could have still said that she spotted them at the river. Hmm. Hmm, I see. Then, one more question. On the same night, did you see Xion? My heart leapt into my throat again. The tiny needles buried underneath Mion's word pricked into me. That... didn't you ask me that yesterday? I think I told you that I wasn't sure if I had or not. Hmm, did you? There we go. This is Xion. But why would Xion wonder about that herself? 
Well, why would Shion want to know about herself? I don't think it is. So for some dumb reason, I'm thinking three people died yesterday night. Tomitake, Takano and Mion. But Mion died being mistaken for Shion. I want to say that's not a mistake. Mion is the one in the drum. Despite being... Oh, because she should have known better being one of the Sonozaki family members. They didn't give her the honor of just killing her in the sense of a Watanagashi. They killed her in a very gruesome way outside of the area. Hmm. As punishment for going yes. into the shrine, probably. But I'm pretty sure that in order to get out of this, Shion was posing as Mion, and that's when the mixeroo happened. And this is Shion covering her tracks. I guess I just thought I'd get a different answer if I asked you again. Could it be? I suddenly noticed something in Mion's eyes. Something indescribable. Mwah, mwah, mwah. The question is, that I have in my head now, did that also happen during the events of chapter 1? Did Shion take over Mion's part, but we just didn't know that it was Shion because Shion as a character hadn't been introduced? I'm still not convinced yet. I think you might have a point. Oh, see, there was one in seven. I'm making backup sense. Because if my theory is correct that Shion is the murderous one, then I, I would need to like rewatch our playthrough of chapter one. <laughs> At what point uh, Mion turned into her murderous other side. No, that's getting extra hints. That doesn't count. That's not extra hints. I could just remember if I had the brain capacity to do that. That's studying frames and stuff. What do you mean studying frames? <laughs> Fine, do whatever. Also, I don't think uh, the Eon that we're currently talking to was hung over. What are you doing? I'm stretching. Okay. I think they drugged her. Going back to the chapter one. Well, if we're already at the point where these people um, have their cannibalistic kink parties, then it wouldn't be too weird to me that they also use drugs for the participants. Probably something as innocent, for the lack of a better description, uh, something that makes you forget. Also, I know you're just moving your feet, but I just heard you touch something plastic and the router is then if you touch that, the stream is over, so please don't. I did touch the router, yeah. How, do, you, do you see why I'm so paranoid sometimes about the things <laughs> she does? One wrong move with her foot, and I don't know how she does it, her feet aren't that long, or her legs aren't that long, usually. But if she presses that button, we're, we're gone. I need to see a little bit more to be convinced whether there's a Xion Mion mix up. Yes, it's all very suspicious, but the fact that it's too suspicious makes me doubt whether it's actually that's ever actually a thing. I'm writing it down now with a date. 26th of June, Mion got killed, mistaken for Xion. Xion also took over for Mion in chapter one, possibly. I want to say that's two things. No, it's one prediction for me. Okay. Just saying that mm. has bitten you in the ass before. It's sure. fine. If now only one of those things is true, you don't get any points. I'm just saying. Nice switch Ruvo with Satoko. Like having her not be there, then mm -hmm. having a tip indicating that at least one person is dead. 
even though unlikely because of her wisdom teeth. Suspecting Satoko is very when, suspicious. When do people get their wisdom teeth usually? Uh, when do people get wisdom teeth? I got mine super late. Between 17 and 24 years old. Okay. Um, so it, it could have been Mion. Mion is like 18, right? 17? So. Mm. Early still, but around that age where you can statistically have them. I still haven't had any. Can they also not come true? I think mine were like end it can teenage be, years or even like beginning 20s. Can be anything. Some people just don't have them. Some people have them, but they never right. break through. They just stay in your jaw, I guess. Also lucky for you though, because I had braces for like two, two and a half years or something like that. And my teeth were kind of okay-ish. And then after I got my got rid of my braces, like a couple of years later, my wisdom teeth came true and they messed up all my teeth again. Like all of that was for nothing. Get good at teeth and it I got a small mouth and there was no more space. So they just pushed everything. Also, wasn't that kind of fate? I mean your name is Tifa. <laughs> Never heard that one before. If you stop oh. thinking, you lose. So far, you're not losing. <laughs> I take it as a compliment. So who do you think it is? Uh, the dead person? I'm thinking... Yeah. Um, Tomitake-san is dead. Takano-san is disappeared. And So they stick to the same... And Mion is the one in the drum that got murderized outside of Hinamizawa. It does make a lot of sense. As a statement to the rest of Hinamizawa, hey, look what we're willing to do to even somebody like our daughter. Nobody is safe. Keep your heads straight and don't fuck with the system. The question is, for the likelihood of that actually happening, are there loyalties to each other or to the to Oyashiro Sama, to the cult? Because I would imagine there's a great character moment for the parents as they're about to set their own child on fire in an oil drum <laughs> to maybe go, yeah, no, actually, uh, I, I quite love my daughter and I would rather not cook her alive. I think you've got to consider this village a cult. And versus then, versus that and then no holds barred like no prisoners everybody is fair game i would say so who will truly support you your family your friends your town your trusty pet rock <laughs> none of them clearly <laughs> it's uh, all about pleasing oyashiro sama for some reason my ultimate question though Oh, not ultimate, but one of my questions remaining after yesterday's stream, exact, uh, especially. Does the meat taste better? You're disgusting, Tifa. No. In the myth, the legend that Takano was talking about, she said that Oyashiro-sama decided to stay on Earth in Hinamizawa with the people. So you think there's a Oyashira-sama walking among us? And if so, who is it? Yes. Because if, if you're t thinking in terms of like cults, it isn't too far off that the cult leader wouldn't just go, oh, guys, by the way, we're, we're all flesh-eating demons, so sometimes you just go crazy, and then we just we just kidnap somebody, and then we just eat them, you know? No, but to also go, oh, by the way, I know all of this, because me, I'm actually not me. Don't tell anybody yet, but I'm actually the current day reincarnation of our guardian deity, Only Oyashiro you. Sama. Only you. What? That's how cults say... work. You, you are better than the others, which is why you know to speak the word of your god. That's why if, they should listen to you. If there is you. a known Oyashira-sama among them, it's probably the head of the Sonosaki family. Because that is That's the most prominent member. Yeah. Or like the mayor of the town. 
something like that. I, I would have first thought the Ferrude family, but the Ferrude family is the shrine priest people and they already got the priest killed back then. So They serve. I, I don't think the, the priest part of the cult structure is the top ranking one. And given that Kasai looked very much like a run of the mill Yakuza, I really think the Sonozaki family is the toppest tier. Maybe that will be the question we need to answer. Who is Oyashiro Sono? Oh, wait a second. I just had another dumb idea. If we go, like, Believing in reincarnation is a thing that is more common in Eastern countries like Japan, right? Buddhism and stuff. In my mind, somehow I was thinking of like a matriarch, patriarch kind of character that we might get to meet at the end. You know, the, the person who ran away back then when they did that to the dam construction worker? Uh, the person is still missing. Yeah, but if we're... If we go with uh, I'm Oyashiro-sama's incarnation on Earth today, it could also be a younger person. Maybe it is Shion. Yeah, but then Shion wouldn't be the one they would want to kill. Mion. Yeah, oh. but you said Mion ah, was yeah, killed yeah, by mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, they true, would true, not true, go true, out true. to kill Oyashiro-sama and yeah. then kill Mion by mistake. Like there's. That doesn't add up. Yeah, fair enough. I see how you got to the point, but it doesn't add up. Or maybe they would, you know, live by the creed, mm. die by the creed, even if it's your god. Nah, they wouldn't. After everything this village has done and is going through and is doing, there's no way. No absolute way. And then it turns out it's actually Keiji. And we're gonna have a twist like... Clones. <laughs> aliens. I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. Are we gonna have a twist like uh, that one time we played a game and Tifa was really hopeful that she got to be the main character? And then it turns out a crucial moment happened off screen. And then we had the grand reveal, and then Tifa was mm. shattered. Took 10 minutes. I, I still remember your face back then. The, not pain. Pain is too simple of an emotion to describe. I didn't see it coming. And neither did I. In the end, I, I think I even said, oh, it, it must have been this person that did that. Because nothing else was still an option. I didn't want it to be okay anyway. Anyway, Tifa is already waddling off screen, uh, off screen. So I guess it's time to say goodnight and mode. Yes, it is. We are going to be back on Friday and hopefully we will find out who our oil barrel person is. <laughs> waddle Thank waddle, you. till the very next stream. Bum, 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 ba, dum. We'll be back on Friday. I expect you to continue the song. We'll see you on Friday. Bye. Thank you for being here. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.